Good morning, everyone. Welcome to round number six of the West Indies Championships. We're at Coolidge. Today is the turn of Windward Islands of Volcanoes taking on the West Indies Academy. Naeem Young and Alec Athanes. Of course, Mr. Paul Felix, uh, once again, is a match referee. I believe uh, you have the coin, Naeem. Tails is the call. And it is a tail. So, Alec, you finally won a toss. Tell me what you're going to do here and why. Uh, we will have a bath. Um, you know, normally the wicket, it has a bit of moisture in the morning. But normally what happens is when the sun hits it, you know, it, it gets nice for batting. Yeah, having a bat first, but batting hasn't necessarily gone well for your guys here in Antigua across the last um, round or so. Just tell me what are your thoughts coming into this one? Uh, well, you, you are right. You're absolutely right. Um, but one of the things we have, it's, it's confidence, you know, and we have the freedom to actually express ourselves. So, no doubt that a good batting performance will come sooner or later. So, for sure, a few changes in your side. Do you actually remember them is the question. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do. Um, we have a debutant in, in Stefan Pascal, the West Indies and I think captain. Um, Dylan Tyson come back, comes back in. Um, Darius Martin and Larry Edwards. Up. And also we have a young Dominican wicketkeeper, Gian Benjamin. You remember that last one? Yeah. All the best today, Alec. Thank you. All right, so Naeem. Having a ball here first, what would you have done had you won the toss? Yeah, he wanted the ball. Um, we played most of our first class games here as an academy, and we found a lot of success bowling first, so we really wanted the ball today. Yeah, you guys have been doing relatively well across the tournament thus far. How do you sum up how things have gone for your boys so far? Yeah, we've played some good first class cricket, and I think we've gotten better over the last two rounds. Um, uh, scoring our highest score in the, in the fourth round and beating that in the fifth. So we've been batting well. Uh, we've been learning from the first three rounds and we've been improving as a team all together. So very, very happy we're, we're rotten uh, just to continue that good form. Yeah, finally, any changes to your side for this one? Yeah, one change. Rashawn World misses out and uh, Akeem Oggies comes back in. All right, well, all the best today, Naeem. Thank you. Well, news from the toss. Windward Islands Volcanoes, they've won it and they're going to have a bat first. Good morning. Good morning, Antigua and Barbuda. Good morning to the entire universe. We are live from the Coolidge Cricket Ground, the home of Cricket West Indies. It's round six, the start of one of the main feature games. It's the Windward Island Volcanoes taking on the home team, the West Indies Academy, on an overcast morning here in Antigua and Barbuda. We had some showers late last night and early this morning. But we are ready and ready to go. And as you heard there from Joel Manning at the toss, the Windward Islands would have won the toss and decided to bat. And on debut, Stephen Pascal will be making his first class debut today. And he'll be joined by Jeremy Solazano, the West Indies Academy team, just for those who will be maybe just joining in to the broadcast and wondering what has been happening. You have Kadim Alin, Akim Ogis, Joshua Dawn, Teddy Bishop, Jordan Johnson, Colin Boyne Tuckett, Joshua James, Nine Young, the captain, Joshua Bishop, who's got close to 29 wickets so far, Ashmi Ned, who's also got 27 wickets, Yuan Lane, and Ashmi Ned, we're in the number 41. Let me just go through those numbers very quickly for you. Kadim Ali, Kadim Allen, we're in number 40, Aki Mogis, number 55, Joshua Dawn, number 12. Teddy Bishop, number 14. Jordan Johnson, number 22. Colin Boyne Tuckett, the wicketkeeper, number 10. Joshua James, number 51. Naim Young, the captain, number 7. Joshua Bishop, number 45. Yon Lane, number 15. Ashmi Nedway, in the number 41. For the Windward Islands, Alex Athenes, the captain. Ryan John, the vice captain, we're in the number 74. Athenes, we're in number 18. Stefan Pascal, who is on debut. He's not facing. He's going to be wearing the number 17, Sonny Lambris, number 99, number 99, Johan Jeremy, number 7, Kevin Hodge, number 22, Jeremy Salazana, who's facing, he's wearing the number 67, and Gian Benjamin, who's the wicketkeeper for this game, number 16, Daryl Cyrus, I'm looking forward to see him, number 10, and Shamar Springer, the fast bowler, number 52, and Jillian Tyson, the fast bowler, number 21. I say good morning to Joel Manning. Good morning, Joel. Uh, good morning, Verdon. Fantastic to be once again here at Coolidge. What is the start of round number six of the West Indies Championships? So the West Indies Academy starting with three slips. 
Short delivery, up a cut by Salazana. Slice down to the third man boundary. First going shot, first ball. Short delivery, and Salazana got on top of it. Up a cut, and down to the vacant third man boundary for four. So the Winwood Island Volcanoes are off and running. Salazano scoring, opening the scoring for the Winwood Island Volcanoes. Yon Lane starting from the CIU Road end here in Antigua and Barbuda. More or less a loosen up the delivery. Academy starting with three slips of gully, backward point, mid on, mid off. One feeler on the boundary, looks like. This one landing into the right areas, coming into this round of round six. The Leeward Islands Hurricanes leading with 80 points. The Windward Island Volcanoes were the leaders up until round five. Then second place with 71 points. Barbados making a surge. Barbados Pride with 67 points. The Ghana Harpy Eagles, 66 points. Jamaica with 53. Trinidad and Tobago with 51. West Indies Academy with 49 and the combined campuses and colleges with 25. No! On the money, hitting the bat very hard there. Lane wearing the number 50. And Salazana comes across his crease. And just plays it up to the mid-off feeler. How's all things been going, Joel? I uh, haven't been going too bad at all. I enjoy the break. Have a chance to dip across the Jamaica Carnival. <laughs> um, but in terms of the cricket action, certainly looking forward to what's on show here of course the conditions right now at the moment favoring the quick ball is a bit overcast here at Coolidge yeah. clipped away down to the boundary coming around nicely is the West Indies Academy feeler looks like it is number 22 Jordan Johnson I wonder if he's injured or something uh, she had a bit of a slip now because of that rain that you mentioned especially last night and into some morning into this morning so the outfield especially that boundary area still a bit wet at the moment having a bit of a slip down at fine leg but what it does it brings young pascal on to strike now on debut here in the first class championships this is west indies cricket west indies regional four day championship 2024 round six with all to play for for all of the teams Stefan Pascal on debut. Yon Lane arms pumping. Gets a wide delivery. No need for him to look to follow that one. Well, we had a busy time, as you would know. Joel, Mali and myself, we covered the Cricket West Indies Under 15 Championship. Congratulations to Team Barbados, who played some exemplary cricket. And some good talent on show all around. No feet movement at all there from Pascal. Just played over a full length delivery. So at the end of one, the first over, the Greenwood Island Volcano just recapping back on that one. Just his hands came, almost like squared him up. And that was a good delivery from Lane to finish strong five without loss yeah good delivery there to end off things for your hand lane probably area that he would like to be especially to the right hander in pascal as you mentioned yeah feet not moving maybe a bit of nerves uh, i don't know but yeah definitely would want to get out a bit more to that one pretty interesting conversation joel this morning while you were speaking to um alex afanes the overcast conditions would you have batted Joel? Yeah, that's an interesting one, and hence why he actually asked with regards to, you know, in terms of the fact that their batting hasn't been doing well, and he's putting his side in. So it's a very confident move, um, and I, I do understand it because you're looking at it over a four-day period in the sense that you're looking at the fact, okay, when we batted second, because when we batted second each time, when they batted second, it was a case that the ball got a bit lower. They struggled in their second innings and struggled in their fourth innings. Want to get out here and use the best part of the surface and what he's asking his batters to do is to be disciplined would I have batted first I probably might not have just given what I've seen in terms of a few cracks yes out there but won't play much at the start of play grass is a bit thicker 
telling myself the overhead conditions at the moment. I'm telling myself, I'm looking at my fastball and saying, okay, if you're running well for me here for 45 minutes, an hour, an hour and a half, in the conditions that we have, which we think will persist for a bit, I think I could make some inroads into the West Indies Academy site. And I might have been inclined to have a bowl first because of that. But I can certainly understand though the decision to bat first, given that it's a fantastic batting surface. We saw what Guyana did when they played versus Barbados. We saw what they did when they played versus the Windwards as well, the type of totals that they put up. So you're expecting maybe that once we get past what would be these initial conditions, we can certainly put up a massive total as well. Salazana's five, two delivery has been spot on target, full toss, looking for the swing. And Salazana just playing around it. it. Was more or less in an upright position. Let's well, say good morning to Franklin Stevenson. And I don't want Roddy Eswick to chastise me again. Good morning, Roddy. Coach of the Barbados under 15 team. And along with his coaching staff, Elvis Howard, Adrian Donovan, Milton Small, all of the folks in Barbados. Young around the wicket to Salazana. Down there. Inside there's a peel for a cut behind. Not out came off of his pad. Excellent take there by Colin Boyne Tuckett. He was dying and he scooped it up with his right glove. It was an excellent take by the young man who's been having a fantastic season. Brushed the tight pad of Salazano. And the umpire was quick to indicate that it had brushed the pad. So the academy starting strong. They have been very competitive so far in this West Indies 4 day Championship for 2024. Still feel the need an off spinner or a wrist spinner. It's got Ned. Oh, he's a left arm fast bowler. Again, searching for the pads again. Inside edge. Save them. And that's a fair because Nine Young on this track, his home venue will get the ball to swing around here. Salazana goes to six. It now brings Pascal, who is on debut, Slight. to face him. And I think this is going to be an That's interesting it. period. Interesting delivery, first up. Next up. I certainly will. Right over, Knowing we'll Naim Young. He's probably looking at that ball. To just be on the pads. Just an observation, um, Joel. He's on debut. I'd have had a short leg in, right in front of him. Just to give him something to think about. Uh, for some strange reason, it's not something that I've seen a lot happening of here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground. We'll get back to that. Pascal gets his delivery. Third of the game. Comes quietly forward to complete the second over of the morning. So if you're just tuned in to the Cricket West Indies YouTube channel, the Winwood Island Volcanoes, they would have won the toss. They are six without loss. All six to Salazano. And Pascal on debut is on not. Morning to Lockhart Sebastian. Rommel Currency. Thomas Kentish. Trevor Schillingford. Testing, testing. One, two. One, two. Very overcast for the meantime. Because the weather can change. And we certainly get hot sometime during the day. It was very, very, very hot yesterday. The last couple of days have been extremely hot. It's going to be a busy summer. Lane going across Salazano. He's got a new ball. I would like to see him attacking the stump some more. <coughs> I'm happy that you mentioned in terms of the type of approach that you might want to see from him because, yes, the conditions are overcast, but if they fail to use the conditions well, then it certainly will play into the hands of the windwards who have opted to bat first. That's the other factor. Yes, you have helpful conditions, but at the same time, you still need to bowl the types of deliveries that can get you wickets in these conditions. That's a lot better. Salazana just easing it into the offside. Jordan Johnson coming around, can't stop the single. Goes up to seven. This is one of the things which was demonstrated by the Barbados bowling attack and also the Guyana bowling attack, which was led by Isaiah Thorne. Well, Thorne really is easily the, fast, the, the fastest bowler on show in the tournament so far. 
but they got early wickets with the new ball and you have to attack the stumps that's a good carry that's a much better line delivery I just find sometimes when you're looking at the cricket Joel especially with the new ball there's been a conservative line to bowl maybe more or less a fourth fifth stump line I'm saying in the first five overs with the new ball you should be honing in at the pads of the batsman testing their defense it's a brand new kokoboro red cherry loose shot by pascal nervous times he's on debut and he just hands just went at it sato was off balance in a way almost got dragged off of his crease solazana called him down very quickly and said, just relax. No need for you to be trying anything too hard. Lane. Good, good delivery. Can I want to see him attacking the stumps. Keep, got to be attacking the stumps. He can do that all day. Good delivery. Missed completely. So the end of over number three. And the Windward Island Volcanoes who have opted to bat first as we look back on the replay there. Wants to get bat onto the ball, but he's really certainly not getting his foot out to the pitch of the ball. Seven without loss at the end of three. Yeah, not exactly looking quite comfortable at the top here so far. Pascal still quite early. Any in innings for him, of course, yes, a young man who's been brought in here on debut. And it's interesting because obviously Kaman Emilius didn't want to open the batting in the last round for the windwards. And he's not had the best of seasons with 142 runs, Kaman Emilius. And I think that might be a factor in why we're not seeing him here in round number six. They had another opener, though. that they've utilized thus far in the tournament that was also Johan Jeremiah who didn't play in the game before this is playing today it's quite interesting in terms of the fact that some might wonder why not have Jeremiah back at the top of the order and allow the young Pascal to maybe take a step or two down He's gone through the defences, Naeem Young. Uh, that's the first wicket of the day. Played right around the delivery. And that's what the point that I was talking about, Joel, by attacking the stumps. And just looking back at that delivery. Bat face ending up into the square leg area rather than up the V. And Salazana goes back. For seven, the Windward Islands lose their first wicket, seven for one. Yeah. Uh, it's quite interesting, and this is what happens in early conditions. Must be playing a lot tighter, can't be looking for those booming drives can't believe in gaps between bat and pad and there you see it needed to be a lot more compact at the top there did solazano left the gap and paid the price so it now brings it johan jeremiah to the crease and i mentioned the fact that he's opened the batting for the volcanoes in previous matches now batting one down at three another left-handed batter for them yeah so one lefty replaces another. And nervous times here for both batsmen. Naim Young picking up the first wicket. And he'll be a handful here. Again, the ball searching around. It's got to be a lot more tighter there, Jeremy. And it just looks as if he's pushing 
as I want it goes back to what I was mentioning in terms of just being contact or rather compact bat and pad close together you just see him just pushing out that ball getting the inside edge it's similar to what we just saw from Solizano he's got a high back lift as well too and think he could be a target that's what I was talking about the short leg Joel they both are not you you've got to be attacking you've got to be pressuring bring Jordan Johnson into that position get some chatter going keep some pressure on seven for one he's got a high back lift it's got to be very careful, especially to a nine young who tends to get the ball to dart around. And the conditions are ideal for his type of bowling. That's swinging. He strokes that true cover for four. Half volley, full toss, put away. And he knows that. Let's see the replay on that one again, Jason. You can see curling. Movement. Yeah, just the fact that it was a full toss allowed Jeremiah to get out to it. But if I were nine young, I would not be disappointed with that at all, at all, because you really want the batters to be striding out, looking to drag you through the covers, and that's where you present the gap between bat and pad. This has to be a period for the Volcanoes where they know that it's not necessarily about the scoring rate. It's really about getting themselves past these early conditions where the ball is moving a bit more where it's helpful. The end of four is 11 for one. Skipper of the West Indies Academy would have missed a couple of games through injury. And before this game would have bowled some 72.2 overs, nine maidens, 278 runs with four wickets. So short on maybe bowling form, coming back from an injury. But the folks who have done the job for him so far has been Joshua Bishop and Ashmin Ned. And they will be the ones that have collected number of wickets between them Joshua Bishop has got 29 Ned has got 27 Yuan Lane who before this game 104 overs 23 maidens 353 10 wickets looking for his 11th wicket has to attack the stumps Yuan Lane somebody has to keep telling him that needs a short leg Academy has to understand the conditions are ideal. You've got a new ball, you've got to pick up wickets, got to put the pressure on the Windward Island Volcanoes. Get that short leg in for Pascal. He's faced eight deliveries, and Lane is, he's got some pace. Ken is going down outside the off stump. Tack the stumps, come. Get the short leg in and keep honing at those pads. I don't necessarily mind those last two deliveries from Johan Lane in terms of just being a bit wider because he saw that Pascal is intent on reaching. So it's almost a case of maybe if he can look to set him up a bit, just keep him hanging outside that off stump, keep him away from bat on ball and just get a bit close to that off stump. Wow, that's where you need the short leg. Wow. That cut him in half completely. He's on naught. He's on debut. You've got to get... He's got a pressurized situation. Good take by Colin Boyne Tuckett. You just wonder if that might be one of the cracks that I mentioned a little earlier. And actually, some... I wouldn't say... Yeah, horizontal cracks. A lot of them going across the surface. And a lot of them are quite evident in terms of being pronounced at this stage on day number one. You wonder if maybe that might have contributed to the exaggerated inward movement on that occasion. Got to attack the stumps lane. Keep coming, keep coming. Test his defense. Naim Young, you have to get a short leg in. You got to get early wickets, especially with the new ball. Have to get early wickets. Just the feel is just too conservative for me. If we're playing cricket, we got to play attacking cricket. This is the fifth over of the morning. Another wide delivery. Eleven for one. Winwood Island Volcanoes winning the toss. Batting first here in overcast conditions here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground. I 
Brown is wide, gone past Callum Boy in Tucket and down to the boundary for a four by signal. So Lane just losing his radar. And somebody has to line him up. Okay, you've got a new ball in your hand. Attack the stumps. You have to keep attacking the stumps. The ball that cut him in half, the second one he faced, he never got anything else like that. He's beating up himself there. End of over number five. And the win with Alan Volcano is there 15 for one. Yeah, I think that last delivery was the magic delivery that he was looking for. So I mentioned the fact that he would have been outside of that off stump for a bit, then would have looked to gotten a lot straighter. I think that was it just going a bit too straight in the movement and the angle, just taking it further down the leg side as well. A bit harsh on the keeper here. Huh? Would have to take a Gordon Bank style to stop that one. Eh? Nine Young attacking the batsman. And he will attack. That's what I'm talking about. Needing to be a lot more compact. Not necessarily getting that full straight out. But allowing that bat to stay close to the pad. I think he's going to need to do a lot of that in these early going, stages. I think he's going hard at the ball, Joel. If you're defending, you're defending. You, you can't be attacking and still defending. Got to look to play with soft hands. Again, in two minds, he was neither forward nor back. He was looking for an expansive drive again. Had to check the shot because it was Young attacking the stumps. Yeah, you're certainly going to get that. It's a case of having to mentally condition yourself to the fact that it's going to be a difficult period for you. Down the onside, Colin Tuckett skips across and collects with both gloves. So good morning to the folks in St. Kitts and Nevis, Anguilla, Montserrat, Basil Morgan would be glued to his television, got his stats out and be recording. Emil Isle, Montserrat. Good take. Uh, Took off, folks in Barbuda, Bermuda. We journey down to French and Dutch and Martin. Sabre, Stacia, Commonwealth of Dominica, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, St. Lucia. We break. Spice Isle, Grenada. End of the over. And Naim Young at the end of the sixth over. Maiden, first of the day. The Winnowed Island Volcanoes, they are 15 for one. Grenada celebrating 50. They had a massive concert at the Karani James Athletic Stadium. A number of top reggae artists from Jamaica and the region. Grace the Shores. And Easter was a very busy sporting activities for a number of. It was the Carifta swimming in Bahamas, but the young athletes in the Caribbean, the Caribbean Netball Association under 16 Netball Championship. We're back with that. Rain at one dying. Colin Boeing Tucket having a toy time taking it, so he's now made an adjustment. That one did keep low. Got to be so careful on the tracks here at the coach cricket ground because if he steps up, then another one might just take off. Need a short leg, need a short leg for Pascal. He's faced 14 deliveries, he's on not. He's under some pressure, he's looking for his first run in first class cricket. Pascal.
no feet movement just the hands going there he's not getting his left foot out to the pitch of the ball what do you think could be going through his mind joel can i get my first run <laughs> yeah certainly that has to be at the forefront of his mind and in front of anybody's mind debut or not yeah he's still there or not from 15 but i say he's not looked too comfortable thus far Ken driving again left foot nowhere near to the pitch of the ball and he's looking for power he's maybe will just be advised joel to just get in line just just get back on the ball just in defense rather than like expansive drive just just get just get in line just work on his defense just drop it and get a single he's looking for an expansive cover drive here comes lane on the money that's better he's got to be honing at those pads give him something to think about it's been a torrid time here for Pascal. I think just a case of having to go back to the basics. He's been trusted at the top of the order. He's here for a reason. They believe he has what it takes to be here. It's just a case of going back to those basics. A lot of those deliveries outside of the off stump that he's playing at. No need to play at, especially at the start of day. Number one can confidently leave those deliveries. Wait for them to come to him. Work it. Get himself off the mark. Get himself into a rhythm. Can drive in. Nowhere close to the line of the ball. He so desperately wants to get the ball onto his bat. He's looking for power. He could leave that because that's wide. That's around the, the foot stump area. So there's no need there. That's a nothing shot. You just get nicked off or caught by a column boy in Tucket or one of the three slips. 15 for one. Pascal on debut. Not. Just relax. This is what first class cricket is about. Wide delivery. Continues to be further and further wide. So the second maiden of the day. And Pascal is still a naught. And one looks at his West Indies under-19 captain on just concluded on the 19 World Cup in South Africa. 8, 33, 58, 26, 6. And so he'll be searching in his mind for, so, for some runs. Got a 58 against England, 33 against Sri Lanka, 8 against Australia, 26 Scotland, South Africa 6, Nepal 7, Pressure, pressure, more pressure being mounted. Still no short leg, but one of the slips have been pulled out. So we're now down to two slips. Short extra cover, mid off, sweeper going out on the offside. Naim Young is still coming around the wicket. on debut 18 years old as Joel said the Winwood Island selectors feel that he has something driven up to Ned Ned has got to be one of the most improved young cricketers around in the region started with the Leeward Islands Hurricanes when this started at the professional level, would have played with the 2019. Not with their first, with the senior in, in Trinidad. With the combined campuses and colleges squad at that point in time, in the Super 50. Then he was drafted by the Leeward Islands Hurricanes. Did not have a bad season. And then lost his contract. The academy has picked him up. Beautiful investment. Short delivery. Naim Young trying something different. That was a slow, long bumper. Have to change the rules. We have to. We have to introduce 
begin to encourage our fast bowlers to bowl at least two bumpers per over. Just played quietly into the offside. Picking up an easy, easy single. Kaim Alin, who's been switched out of the slip. He can't stop the single. The score in the meantime goes up to 16 for one. Yon Jeremiah goes up to five. Right under Pascal. Aline comes back into the slip cordon. Naim Young with the sun. Looking to sweet you. Sweet. Half volley. Stayed away pass. Gully and down to the boundary for four. Over pitch delivery. And he knows Naim Young that he let him off the hook there. So finally Pascal off the mark. The boundary something that he's been searching for all day. Score goes up to 24 and Pascal is four. Yeah, he's starting to breathe a sigh of relief after that one. It's been some time. Gets back onto this one. Still reaching away from the body. Gets it past to the man at Gully and collects a boundary. It certainly will make him feel good now that he's got runs to his name in first class cricket. He's got a job to do for his side and mention the fact that. It's a case of buckling down and not necessarily looking at the scoring rate at the start of the morning, given how helpful the conditions are, given the fact that there might be additional moisture still in the surface. Had rain yesterday, had rain early this morning as well. So things will be helpful for the West Indies Academy. Naim Young mentioned the fact that had he won the toss, he would have preferred to bowl. So he's gotten his wish. Caught brilliantly. That's a magnificent catch by Aline. It was sharp, it was low. Good delivery going across him. And an excellent catch by Aline. The Windward Islands lose their second wicket. 20 for two. Conditions helpful. Bowling fantastic there from Johan Lane. But the catch from Kadim Aline diving across to his right was beautiful. Oh, what a grab that was by Aline. Just pushing away from the body there, Johan Jeremiah. Just a little guilty of feeling for that one. And well, it's 20 for two now. He has to go for five. Big wicket, Yon Lane joins his captain. And an excellent catch. That's what you want to see. Support from your slippies. Out comes the Winwood Island Volcanoes captain. Alex Athenes. By his standard, he's drew for some runs. The leading batsman for the Windward Island Volcano so far has been Sonny Lambris with 359. So Athens knows that this innings is really going to be very, very, very important. Yeah, I mentioned the fact that you need to stay compact, need to keep back tucked in. And here you just see it just pushing away, reaching for it, that angle going across them going to have to be a very patient period at the start here for the Windward Islands Volcanoes. Going to have to leave a few more deliveries. 173 runs so far for Athens. High score of 58. He's got two half centuries, but he needs more than a half century today. He needs a big one. He needs to spend some time at the crease. Lane starting around the wicket. It goes wider of Athens. It's an interesting move from Johan Lee, and they wonder if it's because of the dismissals that we saw for Alec Athenes in round number five here. Ali Mohammed was the bowler coming around the wicket, and Athenes was beaten in between bat and pad. Just feel sometimes he's just a little bit too loose in defense. He's not tight enough in his defense. Have to defend the castle. Steering it. Down to Naim Young. Gully. Remains a knot. Athenes. In 
really didn't come, didn't push out confident enough uh, on his front foot. But he will say, listen, I allow the ball to come right onto my eyes. Yeah, it'll be interesting. And then in that second inning as well was LBW to Nell Smith from around the wicket as well. Arthur is. Again, sliding away down to the vacant third man boundary. Ali missed it. And a the boundary there. Again, that's what I was talking about. Joel, not tight enough in defense. The feet not moving. Let's look at that shot. Sort of just walking across the crease, more or less. He got a boundary, so he's off the mark. Yeah, it appears as if they're looking at it being a technical flaw. And I think this is where you see the analytics for cricket truly coming to the foreign players watching the tapes and getting an understanding because you saw how late he was onto that one Athens and he mentioned the fact that again in that game versus Guyana this was how they got him out twice he's got to look to hit the ball up in front of him he's got to look to hit the ball up the V for longer periods of time he was looking to steer that more or less a one style shot You've got to look to keep looking up the V, especially when somebody's got a new ball in the hand. This is the ninth over of this Kokoboro ball that is bowled by the West Indies Academy, which means that you have to keep looking up the V for a very long period of time. You've got to trust your defense. It's got to be tighter. Squeezing it. True cover for four. Half while he put away. And Lane knows it. The class of Athenes. He certainly will get a boundary. Second of the over. Score goes up to 28 for two. And the Windward Island Volcanoes Athens is on eight. And Pascal on debut is on four. Yeah, just over pitching on that occasion. A bit of width as well. But once again, he was a little frustrated. But at the same time, bowling to what is, I believe, the expected plan to Alec Athens. I suspect that Naeem Young might take a similar approach to him as well in terms of bowling around the wicket getting that ball to come back in towards that front pad to come next most likely will be a Kevin Hodge or Sonny Lambris Still quite a lot of batting here for the Windward Island Volcanoes, but they will need a partnership after losing those two quick wickets. Pascal is just turning this into the mid-wicket area. He'll get two quite easily. Athens is looking to put some pressure on the field. who was just coasting, which was Ned. Ned doesn't have a powerful arm, so he was testing him. But in the end, intent. So he goes up to six, Pascal. Score goes up to 30 for two. Just in case you've just joined the West Indies YouTube channel. Thirty for two. Pascal is six. Driven sweetly out the backward point. Jordan Johnson comes across, knocks it down. Score remains on 30 for two. Exciting times ahead for cricketers, be it women or men in the Caribbean. The West Indies women's team will be playing a series of T20 and ODIs against Pakistan. Ken, loose shot again. No feet movement, just the hands going. It's got to look to be able to understand. This is not a one-day game. This is a four-day game. And you've got to look to leave. That's something that he's going to have to work on in his young career pretty early. Make that adjustment from white ball to red ball. 30 for two. Pascal is six. Athens is eight. There's a painful leg before, but it's certainly going down. Colin Boyne tuck it. Racing away, picking up with his left glove and just ambling the return. Leg by signal by the umpire. Score goes up to 31 for two. As expected now, Naeem Young opts to go around the wicket. 
Athen is taking a leg stump guard. Driven, knocked down at cover by Kadim Alin. So for Athens, they've got two slips, short extra cover. Gully, backward point, mid off, mid on, short mid wicket. And the lone feeler out in Yuan Lane. Over completed. Score is 10 at the end of 10 overs, 31 for 2. Get a Paradiso water break, get himself organized. Gotta ask him, he said he went to Jamaica's carnival. I have to bring him back to Antigua and Barbuda's carnival so he can get a chance to understand Caribbean's greatest summer line. Did you enjoy Jamaica? Oh, I did, but you see, the problem now with Antigua and Barbuda's carnival is that it clashes directly with crop over back home in Barbuda's come and on. as such. Come on, come on. You will on. find me in Barbuda's. Come on, come on, come on, Joel. Come on. You can't be going to one carnival and don't go to the next. <laughs> you have to counteract me there, Joel. Joshua James. He will come into the conversation. Big, strong young man starting from the CIA road and replacing Lane. A lot of talk about this big man. Good carry. Good take by Colin Boyne Tuckett. Quite a number of fast bowlers on short. Jeremiah Louis leading with some 29 wickets so far from the Leeward Islands Hurricanes. James on the money to Pascal. I'm joined by my colleague. I haven't seen him since the under 15. Today's the first day I'm seeing him after the break. Good morning, Marley Richards. Good morning, Vernon. Good morning to the listeners, watchers in the region and around the globe. Yeah. Back to have it's back. It's good to be back actually. Watching this somewhat enticing first session here. It's been all West Indies Academy from my vantage point. Yeah. Driven again up to mid off. Ned making a meal of it. Maybe might have just hit him on the outside of his left hand. For this game, James would have bowled 81.3 overs, 14 maidens. 248 runs with 9 wickets. The best of 4 for 43. So he's maybe just warming up still. Yeah, he is. He's just into his first over. I think it was a pretty threatening first spell that from Johan Lane coming from the CIU road end in what was quite helpful conditions, especially overhead. It was quite overcast. This pitch, though, Vernon, seems to have a bit of pace in it here on day one. That's down the leg side again. Tuck it. Doing fantastic work. I think it brushed the pad. Mm. A good take. Had a close call, Salazano, before he was dismissed early to Naeem Young. Good wicket keeping down the leg side again from Carl and Bowen. Tuck it. Something you keep saying all the time, Mali. Once the ball starts to swing around, the batsmen in the Caribbean they just look out of sea. Nobody's tight enough. Nobody wants to hang in. Again, Athena is not tight enough. Just got to trust his defense. And sometimes I just get the impression he goes off balance. 
just defend, just get in line and just look to just 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 block for a while. Yeah, at times it's okay to defend. You know, we know the stroke maker that Alec Ashenez is. Still a young player, still working out the best way of going about <laughs> building an innings here. But he's an international player now and you've seen the international class already. Again, that kicked on him, really. Over comes to an end, 11 bowl. We know the Island Volcanoes would have won the toss 32 for two. Would you have bowled for us? Hmm. That's a tough one, especially with the conditions that we've had here in Antigua. It's been quite dry. Uh, it just started to rain, what, in the last day or so? It was quite overcast here this morning. I think it was a good decision, really. Can back, uh, <laughs> Couldn't fault them either way, to be honest. The Windward Islands, if they had chosen to bowl, now they've chosen to bat. I still think this pitch, though there's something in it for the fast bowlers, this pitch is going to be very good for batting. They've just got to see off this first session also. As the day progresses, it, I think the pitch will get quicker. Pascal driving, but can't go past Naeem Young. I think it would be in a mindset situation, Mali, because when they played against the Bar the Ghana Happy Eagles, the Windows Island Volcanoes, they batted last, and psychologically that would be going through their mind. Yeah, well, that's a long, long time ago, actually. <laughs> you think about it. <laughs> this one just tailing in once again from Naeem Young, and he's fantastic in these conditions. We've said it, especially here at the CCG. West in, yeah, home of the West Indies Academy, that's for sure. It's almost a bit of a fortress, isn't it, for them? Even though they would have lost their last match here, Naeem Young actually didn't play in that game. In terms of the wickets he's had this season, he's, he'll probably say he's been b below par coming into this match. Just four wickets for Naeem Young. Good leave. From Pascal, this time just having a look. Nine from 30. And when he says a long time ago, the last time the West Indies Academy would have played here was way back in February. Yes, it, yeah. So it's been a long season, even though it's maybe at the end of it you'll just see probably seven games or so. It's been a long season for these guys. Driven up to mid off. Aline. Big guy gets down. Took an excellent catch, Marley. Oh, what a catch that was. Went low down to his right. Big guy, as he said. Had a fair way to go. It went quick as well. Sharp, sharp catch. And that's what you're going to need, the West Indies Academy. Just going to need to be on top of their game here, especially with the basics. Fielders backing up the bowlers. Died away. Just going about the fifth, sixth stump line. Every now and again, one tends to keep down. But good take again by Callum Boyne Tuckett, keeping his eyes on the ball. And we're just seeing young Stefan Pascal now. His feet just starting to move. Maybe started a bit nervously on debut. West Indies under 19 captain. In the previous West. Uh, under 19 World Cup. Again, punch down the ground. Aline coming across and hurling a return to Tuckett. Can't stop the single because it was wide of him. And the end of over number 12. The Winnowed Island Volcanoes there. 35 for 2. 1 for 7. They lost their first wicket and 2 for 20. So, well, it's a rebuilding time here. Partnership of 15. Yeah, just time here, for especially for the young man. 10 off 33. Took him 20 deliveries, actually, to get off the mark. You could tell maybe just struggling with a little bit of nerves. Just adjusting to the pace, maybe. First class senior cricket, though. It's against the academy. He was threatened by Johan Lane, but he's come through that test. He should take some confidence from that. And as we are saying, this pitch, if he can see himself through this period... We saw with that straight drive down the ground on the last delivery. Uh, this pitch possibly, just quick enough, 
give the batters the opportunity to play through the line. That's something which top order batters really like to do. That's naughty a naughty shot. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. And I think it's mind games now, Mali. Transition from the white ball to the red ball. You have to leave. Got to leave and more leave. And even if he wanted to play that shot, Mali, he didn't get into the right position. You've got to be breaking down backward point to that shot. The hands just more or less at a get out shot. And also from the junior ranks to the senior ranks. Uh, young Pascal would have been, had he not been picked here, he would have been playing for Dominique in the Windward's under 19 championships going on as we speak. That's a good leave, though. Yeah, very good leave. West Indies under 19 captain. Still has another year at the under 19 level. So too is Nathan Edwards. And then you're going to have the emergence of a Joel Andrew from the Leewards. And I was just having a little look through. Uh, the last time the West Indies under 19s would have had a tour involving some red ball, that would have been against Sri Lanka, where they played two red ball tests under 19 youth tests five members of that touring squad have graduated to the first class level since then so that's been good to see young pascal being the latest one as he gets a single there Tim jordan johnson as well he's playing in this match he's a member of that tour joel andrew joshua dawn as well who's playing in this match so three playing in this match it's good to see that elevation from the youth to the senior level and if not we can get two of them to the international level and to be real players for us i think that would have been that would be so beneficial captain is trying to come forward more or less what's it gonna that balance now he's now retaking his guard it looks like he's going to take an off stump guard i think the issue with alec athen is he's so talented and he loves to play strokes he's just got to find that balance between attack and defense he's got to bide his time he knows he's got all the shots in the book but in these conditions here we've just seen the odd delivery bounce as well just got to be a little tighter in this situation free scoring player Again, that one kicked on him. Ken looking to go square rather than up in front of him. It's got to be a lot more tighter. And one of the things, Mali, because you know that as, a, as, as an international cricketer, you've got to be tight in your defence. I mean, as you go up the levels, yeah, the, yeah. The, as the youngsters would say, there's levels to this. As you go up the levels, the bowlers are even better. They hone in on your weaknesses. They can repeat it over and over and over again so it's not just a physical challenge it's also a mental challenge that's i think why it's called test cricket tests every aspect of one's game and we saw that in the australia two test series you know you had those guys keep coming at him all the time consistently with consistent pace as well yeah. that's just not something but they would have come away from that experience the better for it but sometimes even you come away from that concept, Mali, you come back to the Caribbean and then you realize, well, Mali Richards is not as fast as a, a Pat Cummins. So you, you, you're, you're lapsing concentration because you think this is the Caribbean, but you still have to approach it in that positive way that you're playing test cricket. You've got to be consistent all the way. And yeah, I think that's natural in terms of if you're playing against Pat Cummings uh, this week and then tomorrow you're playing against Mali Richards, it's something completely different, right? Uh, you do expect that, but at the same time, it's the mental challenge of almost dropping down a level and still repeating the good habits is, 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 is the issue. Another bowling change, Kadi Malin replacing Naim Young. So the academy, they got their fast bowlers working in tandem. 36 for two, 13 overs bowled. If you're wondering what's happening, we are 10.55 in Antigua and Barbuda. So we're still inside the first hour, and the academy with the seamers not doing bad at all with the overrate. No, not at all. Yeah, they've been 
very good they've gotten around in the field they've been threatening as well they've really used this new ball Kadim Allen being brought into the attack somewhat surprisingly for me though he's coming off a three for in the final in their last match versus the CCC a match in which West Indies Academy would have won by 61 runs three for 44 in the second innings for Kadim Allen so he's been given another opportunity here in helpful conditions starts with a bit of swing He too is being touted as a potential cricketer coming through. It's also remind me of a first time I saw Phil Wallace. Big, strong lad. Hit the ball very far. Not close, but far. I first saw him Mali. I think it was in a police in the police T20 tournament. I think that's where I first would have had a look at him. Caddy Malin, yeah, big guy, isn't he? First time I saw him bowl, I thought maybe he could. Looks like he's got a yard or two in there. Seems like he's been working quite hard on his bowling and his fitness as well. Well, fitness for sure. Mm. You can see that. He's, he's certainly. Because I think one of. The join, he might have missed a couple of games through injury as well, too. Down the onside. Good take by Tuckett. Ball just dropped out and died on him there. Did he lose his shoe? He did. He did. <laughs> not only not only did it die on him, it swung. It did. Swung late. Almost like it turned him around as if he was batting. Yeah, wrong footed. <laughs> the young wiki keeper. Most likely he kept his body behind the line of the ball as well too. But he's come on leaps and bounds in the last this fit is three games, hasn't he? 256 runs, high score of 76, two half centuries, average of 36.57. And if we're looking for an investment in a in a young keeper, I think Carl and Boy in Tuckett is making a serious statement. Yeah, well, he's been invested in already quite heavily. He's just starting to repay that investment, especially with the bat. Always thought he had the skills with the, the, with the gloves. I think young Pascal here, sorry, Vern, just learned that as he grows into his career and becomes more experienced at the first class level, just seems to have a tendency at the moment to just play on the move. He's going to have to shore up that base, but definitely one of the young talents in the region. And you know that comes Mali from white ball cricket. You want to improve on your strike rate. Here is going to be, like you said, going to have to be a little more patient. Over comes to an end. So Aline starts with a maiden, I think the third of the day. 14 overs bowled. We know the Island Volcanoes, 36 for two. Rebuilding time, as the late Mighty Arrow would say out of Montserrat. And it certainly has to be a rebuilding time for the Windward Island Volcanoes. Yeah, and especially when he got here this morning, saw the overhead conditions, heard the Windwards would have won the toss and batted. I thought, Naim Young in these conditions here, especially from the the uh, commentary box end, his com his customary end uh, tends to be a handful, especially with the new ball. And boy, did he get a bit of swing early. I thought Salazano looked quite good, quite assured. But at the end of the day, he was undone by an absolute peach of a delivery. Talking about Ali in Mali, he's got some 208 runs with three half centuries. So he's been a dasher for the West Indies Academy at that. At, at that at strike rate as well. Yes. High strike rate. So he looks to put pressure on more often than not. I've seen him be devastating in the white ball game, the limited overs format. And his strike rate at, at the red ball level has been 102.46. So that's a high proportion. And he's really gone hard at, at the bowlers. Thirty-six for two. I think the next stage of his development also pretty similar to Alec Athenes would be just the mixture of attack and defence. Because you mentioned Philo Wallace, F 
Angela Wallace was a dominant, dominant opener. You think back to that partnership with Clayton Lambert as well. Here's Athens back and just turning this one. Really no real conviction, no movement of the left foot uh, to get deep into the crease. Well, let's just stay and just kind of caught him by surprise. But you can see the academy is working on a plan to Athens. Getting that ball to just steeply bounce just anywhere around the middle and off, testing him. And they know he loves room as well outside that off stump. Ali Katanez. You saw how Guyana chose to attack him, the Harpy Eagles, more often from around the wicket. And that's a Caught. picnic again. No, oh, it's dropped. dropped. Put you down Aki Mogis, that second slip. Yeah, you can't drop that. That's an easy sitter catch. And I was just about to say, Mali, here was Pascal just going to that period just before the water break, just before the first hour of play. And I'll say something to you, Mali. I was looking at them, the West Indies Academy this morning, catching. And for some reason, Pascal didn't look comfortable catching. And there was one, an easy catch to him, and floored it. Yeah, chance goes down. The young Pascal gets a life on debut here. That one just illustrating the extra pace in this pitch. Flew down to Aki Mogis. Just above head height. Comfortable at this level, really. But just burst through the hands of the young St. Lucian. So chance goes to begging. Still two wickets down for Winwood's Volcanoes. Could be even worse here. You have to take these catches, Mali, at this level. Maybe that w maybe that's exactly what young Pascal would need in this situation. Oh, that's a that big is gonna shot. Be close. That's going to be close. Has it done enough? No stroke offered uh, as well from around the wicket. We saw that a bit earlier, maybe. Alec Athenes just struggling to judge outside the off stump. There, um, maybe just height the issue. Height. And I think what actually, there were two movements, Mali. His left foot moved across first, and then it moved again because he was hit outside the line. I think I would like to see him playing those balls. And I think, if you think back to the delivery in which he got off the mark, it was an edge down to third man. It was a late decision. He was actually going to leave. Chose at the last second to just bring the bat down. It was off Johan Lane. Once again, honing in on those pads is James. Good stuff this from the West Indies Academy. As you said, first hour of play in the books. It's been all West Indies Academy so far, but young uh, Stefan Pascal, West Indies under-19 captain, he's fighting away. It's 38 for two after 15 overs. We'll take a little break. Join us in about five to ten minutes. Sure.
Welcome back to the Coolidge Cricket Ground, the home of Cricket West Indies. Exciting times ahead here. And one would have to say that Mali, that the Windward Islands Volcanoes, 38 for 2. You'd say the first hour going to the West Indies Academy. Yeah, it's been first hour of play to the West Indies Academy. They've been threatening. Uh, they've created chances. We've just seen one gone down. So it could be even better for them. But young Pascal, he's looked quite good at the crease considering he's on debut obviously there'll be a bit of nerves uh, running through the young man and Atenez he's been his almost breezy self but he's got to be careful here especially in these conditions don't want to underestimate conditions here at the CCG this pitch probably the quickest we've seen so far here this season bit of pace bounce a tinge of green uh, interesting overhead conditions overcast yet still sunny so it's, it's one of those days Aline to Pascal that turned him right around and again he was just not comfortable in his approach his crease his movement first of all he was looking to just walk around it's gonna have to be a lot more tighter the young Kadim Ali in here looks to be really running in, putting in the effort. And the, the yard or two that we've thought that he he's possessed since he burst on the scene, we're starting to see it. Bit of swing here, driven sweetly from Pascal. That will do his confidence the world of good Vernon. Yeah, Naim Young is very upset with himself that he didn't cut that off. And once it beat him, it went downhill on a golf course like shot. Clark was on for someone. And a boundary to Pascal. The second delivery after the water break. That will give him some confidence. He just overpitched there from Aline. It's quite upright when playing that shot, uh, Stefan Pascal. But Presented the full face of the bat. Good timing. So his second boundary takes him to 16. 42 for 2. Short delivery. Well, actually something, Mali. We had a first hour. We never saw a short leg. Yeah, you're right. Considering how this pitch has been playing, we've seen the ball just bounce as well. And for somebody must have heard us. Uh, helmet is coming <laughs> out now. In fact, I was so I was concerned, Mali. Pascal was a north for a long time in the lane, working up some pace. Yeah, surprising from as even from Naim Young, considering how tactically astute he is, uh, especially when the left hander was on strike, Salazano with that ability to just swing the ball back in not to have a short leg in but now we have what do you call this short leg where is he going can't be a short leg for sure Mali. very deep there i think alin is trying to get him to get closer oh oh that has hit him in his helmet he didn't look at that ball. That's what we're talking about, Mali, when you have a short leg. There was no movement. He just, the ball was banged in, and he just took his eyes off the ball, hit him in his helmet. Out comes the physio and the doctor. I'd love to see this again, actually. I'm not so sure he took his eye off that, Vern. I think it just didn't bounce as much as he ex expected, but I could be wrong. Seems to be fine. We're going to have the concussion put. Joel is holding down the fort right there. So <laughs> <laughs> but that's that, that one, Mali, as you rightly said, um, the doctors or the physios come out to be able to take the checks on him. He's going to have to keep his eyes on the ball. Caddy Alim, he's, he's got some pace, Mali. Yeah, and that's something we've also grown accustomed to seeing here at the CCG at times is that inconsistent bounce. And there's Stefan Pascal just looking to get under that one. 
I thought he, he, he looked to play it fairly comfortably. He just didn't bounce as much as he thought, probably. Hit him flush on the helmet, but he looked fine. He got up right away. He was he almost got a, 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 a carefree nature to him, almost. Just in his body language. Yeah. Almost operates the same way as a, a Teddy Bishop. Mm. Very languishing in their, their, their styles and approach. I'm sure that's just the outer shell inside. He'll be quite determined. I love the way he spoke as well. Every time he spoke in the, at the World Cup. Oh, yes. I thought he was a fantastic leader. He's a great motivator as well. Seemed to be uh, well well liked by his teammates. Seemed to be well drilled too. Took mm. some excellent catches in, in, in that World Cup. Probably took the catch of the tournament oh. for me. That was a blinder. Mm. Obviously, would have wanted to get a few more runs. He's got the one half century, but no, Mali. He's not looking at the ball. He didn't look at that at all. That was a swipe, and that is because of the, as you rightly said, Mali, the inconsistent bounce and now having, don't want to say a short leg because he's pretty, 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 pretty far um, in 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 the context of what is taking place. That's also inexperience. Just. The Inexperienced, remember, a young man on debut, 18 years old. He's going to have to dig in, Mali. He's going to have to dig in. Obviously, would wants to send an instant message back after being hit on the helmet. Just saw the length, played the shot, as you said. Probably the first time today where he didn't watch the ball as closely as he could have. Go shot again. Yeah, he's not comfortable, Mali. And simply because he's not comfortable, he's, he's, he's not getting deep, he's not getting back and across. If he's going to bowl him that, that, those short deliveries, he's got to get back and across and keep watching the ball. End of over number 16, a maiden over, 42 for 2. Yeah, testing stuff this for young Pascal, but this is what you want to see, him tested at this level. As he's saying, it's not a boy's game anymore, he's amongst men. So far, he seems to have the aptitude for the fight. That's what I love to see, though. Maybe he almost gave it away in that last over, but he will learn from these situations. If he can just apply what he's learned from innings to innings, have these incremental improvements from innings to innings, match to match, I think he'll be fine. 42 for two. Joshua James from the CIA road end. He's coming around the wicket. Nine young. They feel they're in this contest. And if they can get Athenes, get in Hodge and Ambrus, we could really put some pressure on the Winwood Island Volcanoes batting lineup. Who's not been really batting well. Yeah, and you can tell with the changes that they've made, they're probably not at their most confident. Started the season really well. The, the Windward Islands were leading the competition for much of the way. Here's Athenes going square. Jordan Johnson. I think that would have been out had he hit. Yeah. Sharp stuff from Johnson. So once again, young Pascal maybe just floundering f mentally here at the moment. Just struggling to come to grips to the requirements of the first class game at the moment. But Expected growing pains for me. Everything happens quicker now. The ball probably just comes onto the bat quicker. The fielders are even quicker. Even though these young guys, they would have played a lot of cricket together. It's just a bit more intense. Ken Athen is looking to go square. No balance at all in that shot. Be advised to just stand up and punch that to cover. Score remains on 42 for 2. Athens is 9 from 19. Morning Lockhart, Sebastian. Morning Sibo. They're in Dominica. I'm sure he's tuning in intently. Uh, he, he's not moving from that television today for sure. He'll be looking at almost all of the games. So too like Basil Morgan as well. Empire Basil Morgan. 
and so much of the stalwarts of cricket from around the region. This is going to be an interesting round. Round six is going to be very keen. We know the Islands in second place with 71 points. Leeward Islands Hurricanes coming into this round with 80 points. Barbados 67, Ghana 66, Jamaica 53, Trinidad 51, and the Academy 49. Not bad at all. Squeezing this to cover half volley four runs. Yeah, that's his area. He loves anything full with a bit of width, and especially uh, those wide open spaces through the covers. That's an easy, easy stroke for a player of Alec Athanes's class. But you mentioned the table, Vernon. I think form, the form guide is so important as well. The Windward Islands, though they're second, had back to back losses. So started with three wins in a row. So but you could just pitch them, Ali. If the Windward Leeward Islands would have won that game against the Academy, competition might have been done and dusted. But you never know. Short delivery, no pace. And that's easy shot for him. Smacked it over. Wide mid-wicket for six. Yeah, I was watching the field and not the screen on that one and lost that one. I just saw the umpire signaling six. That was... He was onto that early, wasn't he? Yeah. And that's the kind of player Alec Athenes is. He's always looking to put pressure on. I think just finding the right balance of mix uh, of, of attack and defense sorry is the next stage of his development for him to really go to the next level to be as good as I think he can be Joshua James is gonna have to be patient he's got to come back to his first couple of overs land it on the money oh going square again Inside edge, almost going onto the stump again, looking for an extravagant cover drive right there. Let's have a look at this again. You'll probably find here, Vern, that that weight was probably just a little on that back foot. Have a look there. Yes, it collapses, but that weight is slightly going back for Athenes. Thick inside edge. And just goes back to what we're saying, that mixture of attack and defense just seems to be looking to play shots at all times and that can have its benefits but as you go up the levels as we were saying earlier against these real international standard bowlers it's really tough to do 53 for two the Winwood Islands here is Pascal having a heave at it into the wide make it wait mid wicket boundary for four. Yeah, he was expecting a short one there, wasn't he? On, he was just was. waiting on that one. Confidently played from the West Indies under nineteen captain. Probably not as short as he anticipated, but kept his eye on this one. Well done to Joel. Mad skills here by Joel Manning. Told me he went to Jamaica's carnival. I told him to come to Antigua Carnival. This is what he told me, Mali. Oh. He can't miss Barbados Cup over. No, how could he? He's going to go to Jamaica Carnival and miss his own? That doesn't make sense, does it? I wanted him to share both. <laughs> <laughs> I think Antigua misses out. Yes. Happening at the same time. Yeah. And you know the cro crop over is, is big. It's come a whole long way. Some of the outstanding artists would have made that over the years. The red plastic bags, the Gabby uh, company, Crossfire, Square One. So all of a sudden, the partnership now yielding 37 from 53. Pascal is 20. Both batsmen are 20. Pascal 20 from 50. Athens, the Winwood Island Volcanoes captain, is on strike 20 from 23. He would know that his team needs him. Has to get a big score. And his temperament here today is going to be very, very, very important. Important period of time. Coming around the wicket is Karim Aline. We're in the number 40. Could carry through to wicket keeper there. 
good presentation of the seam yes. as well too. Really bending his back here. Completed his action. I remember seeing him in that uh, police tournament, that T20 tournament. And mm. to be fair, he's a big guy. He was bowling at <laughs> what we would call rat pace. I don't think the police could have handled him, Mali. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, with just a bit of movement on offer for him as well. It's proving that he could be quite a handy all round cricketer. You can see these skills translating to the T20 game, the 50 over game as well, especially with how explosive he is at the top of the innings. One thing I can say to you, Mali, he's a three dimensional player because he can feel. Exactly. We saw that catch, he took it slip. Certainly a find. Nick. Oh, Ooh. almost. That's a beauty. Thought I heard something there. In Once again, just luring Athenes into that fast stroke. I said to you, Mali, there's a West Indies A team that is going to play some T20 games. In Nepal. He, his name has to be on the list. I think so. Five T20s being scheduled what, late April. So not too far from now. In just a 27 couple weeks. Twenty seventh of April is yeah. the first game. He, he certainly he's got to be up there. Wow, he's getting this ball to talk, Mali. Really getting this ball. He's really getting this the movement here on the, with this ball. Athens twenty, Pascal twenty. And he's looked though, like he said to the skipper, I'm going to up a gear here. I'm going to up my pace. I need this big wicket. The wicket of Athenes. Very high back lift, Athenes. He scored! Set him up. Loose shot. He was not into position. And Athenes goes. Caught at first slip. And nothing shot. Just too many shots here from Alec Athenes, as we've been saying. You could almost see it happening. Just looking to be aggressive to almost every delivery. Taking the defense out of his game. And here, top edge through to Teddy Bishop. Fantastic catch from him. So three down now. Windwards Volcanoes. The batting worries continue. Does continue. It's not a good sign. And the captain... The demonstration of that shot selection. You can't be upset if an Ambris or a Hodge or a company comes out playing shots. you got to be the leader. And you've got to be more circumspect than that. Athens goes back for 20. That's what we were saying. At times, you've just got to bide your time as a batter. Especially in conditions maybe just suiting the bowlers. A player of his class, you know how quickly he can score. Sometimes you just got to show how sound you are defensively as well. Especially in the longer format of the game, you've got to have different modes of operation. And here, Alec Athena is just a little too aggressive in these conditions for my liking. And, and nothing is wrong, Mali, with being aggressive. Um, at the same time, you have to be able to mix solid defense with aggression as, as as well and that's something that i don't think that was exhibited enough from athenes i think you've also got to respect good bowling regardless of who's bowling you know you probably think yeah i'm an international player i've now come back down to the first class level and playing against the kids per se but the west indies academy have been on top of their game here this morning and they've bowled really, really well in good areas, and they've been threatening more often than not. This one, big, big in swing here from Aline. Probably just sneaking down the leg side. So yeah. the end of a successful over, an over in which he picked up the skipper, Alec Athenes, the Windward Islands Volcanoes, after winning the toss, choosing to bat, are 57 for three. Yeah, it's rebuilding time. It's testing time here. A little nervous period of time also for Kevin Hodge. 
would have maybe just come in, that one tailing in a way down the leg side. But you can see the intent there from uh, Joshua James, understanding where he wants to land the ball. Young Pascal, 20 of 50. We're going to be looking to him, even though he's on debut. We'll be looking to him here to just keep going. He's done all the hard work, man. Yeah, he's he's it for over an hour. He'd want to go right up to lunch. He's going to be tested. Another hard length there from Joshua James. James, 235 runs, one half century. High score 58, so he too has been showing his his mad skills as as an all-round cricketer as well. Johan Lane as well would have scored 60, a half century as well after. Yeah, so they're low order. The last match, if I'm not mistaken, off about 23 deliveries. <laughs> yeah, you. <he was laughs> I think he can ena enable Carl, Carl and Boyne Tuckett to get that 76 not out as well too. And the rate at what he was going at, he looked like he could have got to 100 in that game. We are some 31 minutes away from lunch. And the pressure mounting here on the Windward Island Volcanoes, 57 for three. But if you want a man at the crease at this point in time, it certainly will be a Kevin Hodge. Oh, oh, that's trying to go leg side of the ball, trying to get extravagant. And he's trying to fight fire with fire, but he's going to, the approach is wrong, Mali. Yeah, have a look at this, as you said, just staying leg side of the ball there. Look at that. No real foot movement from young Pascal. Exposing all of his stumps. Mm. I think he's going to get set up, Mali. I see how he handles this one. I think it'll be a short one. Will he get in line? Is he looking to get in line here? Yeah, that's a lot better from the young man. They're closing him down, Mali. They're really building the pressure on him. He's 20 from 54. Normally, in white ball cricket, he'd be off and running already. Yeah, if I was him, I wouldn't be too worried about that. Especially being on debut. He said he was home preparing for the Windward Islands under 19 championships, where he probably would have been captain, captain of the Dominica team. Got a call up that you're going to Antigua. That's a much better shot. Easy to cover. Oh. Skipper Josh. Uh, not Skipper, Bishop. Just a slight fumble. He was so desperate to get the ball. He never got it. <laughs> Josh James wouldn't be too disappointed with that stroke, though. No. Once again, just staying a bit leg side ish of these deliveries. Especially with the two slips and the gully in place. If I was them, I'd have another one in here. And for I'll Pascal. And I'll get the chocolate closer. Right under his eye. Give him something to think about. Oh, this one's done him. This one's cut him in half, actually. It's the second time we've seen that happen to Pascal, but he survives nonetheless. Testing stuff this from the Academy and Josh James in particular. 59 for three, the Volcanoes. Wow. What a delivery that was. 19 overs bowled. Pascal, this has been a real baptism for him into first class cricket. Justin is under 19, Captain. So also just a bit of seam movement on offer here for the seamers. They'll be very consistent in landing the ball into the right area. Started first with their Captain Nine Young. Yon Lane, don't think he attacked the stumps enough, really. But when he did, 
he was a handful as well. But he's such a tall guy. It's very easy for us to say a, for a tall bowler, oh, attack the stumps a lot more. But his natural length will probably be more of that hard length. And when he looks to pitch it up and hit the stumps, it's when he over pitches, bowls those half volleys. Half volley there from Aline. Put away quite nicely from Kavem Hodge. So he's away. Yeah. Didn't try to overhit it. Just stayed in the moment. Just checked it almost. Yeah. No great extravagant flourish there from Kavem Hodge. Just the hands more or less. And found a gap, which is right in front of him. Sort of looked up the V. Let's see what the response will be. Hustling him more or less. But once again, you've noticed that this West Indies Academy, they've left that cover region open. Looking to entice these Volcanoes batters into the drive. Head coach Ryan Griffith with a lot of data on most of these West Indian players. Certainly been put into use here. Short delivery just helped around to Lane. Gets down into the long barrier position. And Hodge gets his fifth run of the day. Exciting times ahead here. The academy as well. Developments in terms of appointments. A new West Indies Academy head coach has been appointed. Ramesh Suba Singh. And Pascal being hustled in defense. Every now and again, Mali, he, he, he doesn't get back and across. He just walks across the crease or just stays leg side. So these young charges will be hearing a different voice, Vern. It's been Co uh, Andrew Coley, it's been Coach Griffith. Now it's going to be. Sri Lankan former first class player Suba Singh. It's a good bounce of that. That one really got up. Actually, wide signaled from the umpire. But that will be the first for the over, right? Pads there. Big swing in. Yeah, it's got to be tighter. It's got to be. It's got to be tight in defense. He's still going, looking to go hard at the ball there. Sixty-five for three. Lovely on drive, down the ground. I think it will have the legs to go all the way. It now hits the boundary. Big effort there. But a long chase like that for Ned. Boundary signal by the umpire. Lovely on drive from Pascal. Yeah, once again, big in-swing here from Aline. Goes wide of the crease. But with that mid on very wide indeed just needed to make contact was Pascal presented as full a face as he could on that occasion maybe took the inner half of the bat but four runs nonetheless well, his third boundary now so his innings just building nicely here on debut he's had a few tough periods but you do expect that especially for a young player Gotta keep going though, even if he just scratches his way to a half century here. It's important.
important he doesn't give it away, Vern. Just would like to see some more pressure, Mali. And they, we look like if we're getting more pressure now. Shortly getting closer. Looks like we're going to have a bowling change. Going to spin for the first time today. Right. Would you have gone for spin yet, Mali? I'm not sure what I make of this, to be fair. Especially with Hodge just coming in. I'd have given him, I'd have given James uh, one more. I think we, skipper just, Naeem Young just easing up the pressure here. The Seamers have been able to pick up three wickets so far. And I don't think I'd have been bringing spin right now, Mali. Well, spin has been the success for the academy. The academy so far this season. 56 wickets between both Bishop and Ned. Yeah, both left arm orthodox spinners. But every day is a new day. Each match is a new match. Conditions vary from day to day as well. Not so sure I would have gone for spin here within what, 20. The 21st over. Surely Young Lane could come back for a few. Oh, yes. In fact, it might have been interesting to bring Lane back now. Put some pressure on Pascal and, 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 and Hodge. Even if you had to bowl him for 2 3, you know, circumspect. Especially if they work as hard as possible on day one, it could free up the workload as. The match progresses if they could knock the volcanoes over here. Well, the first thing they've got to be seeing is that you want to get a Sonny Lambris in very early. Especially against the ball moving Mo around. Moving around. Mm. That's what you want to you want to test that that, that top order of the Windward Island volcanoes. Well, they're one wicket away here. Then. Yeah, you get Hodge and a Pascal, you know, you know what's going to be happening. Just not sure on day one here on this pitch. Oy, let's stop. Before lunch. At the spin is the option here. Because Ned is going to bowl the same pace, Mali, as a young lane. lane young lane is going to bowl quicker. Yeah. Ned is going to come and be honing at the pads. And he's not the biggest of. He doesn't turn, turn the, ball the ball the biggest at the best of times. Very accurate, though. Tends to bowl in between wickets and wickets. Varies his pace nicely. I think Bishop is the bigger turner of the ball. They actually complement each other very well. 71 for three. Bang, pass backward, point for four. Offline delivery by Ned. And Kevin Hodge putting a put it in the way nicely goes to 11 and that was a lovely cricket shot yeah it wasn't a rank long hop from Ashmead Ned there but Kevin Hodge was quick the footwork was sharp and as we like to say use that depth of the crease got back quickly picked that length and hammered that behind backward point for four runs so his second boundary of the day he started Quite confident, the 11 of 10 here. What I like about that shot, Mali, is that he found the gap. Because normally you tend to hit balls straight to the feelers, but he did find the gap. I like the fact that he watched it all the way onto the bat. I think that helped in him finding the gap. Got good contact as well. Raced yep. away. Oh, give some confidence to Pascal as well, too. Having someone like a Kevin Hodge on debut, batting with you. Just made his test debut for the West Indies team. Yeah, he should be feeling quite confident, to be fair. He's done all the hard work. Oh. He's nicked off! But Poor shot before lunch. No feet movement, just the hands going. Loss of concentration. Pascal goes. Yeah, we did say they wouldn't mind seeing Pascal keep driving outside that off stump. They've left that cover region open just for that reason bit of shape from Aline. comfortable comfortable he healthy edge comfortable catch by teddy bishop there at first slip 
easy peasy and the debut innings of the West Indies under 19 captain comes to an end he has to go for 26 but I expect that this young man will be scoring a few more runs in a not too distant future so it's been a torrid time for young Pascal on debut for the Windward Island Volcanoes he will remember this innings for a very long time 75 for 4, Pascal goes back to the Windward Island Volcanoes out. Yeah, he has to go. And it brings Sonel Ambrish to the crease. And he's not known to be the most compact and tight players at the best of times, especially with this ball just moving around. So an opportunity here for the West Indies Academy, a real opportunity to get in and amongst this Middle to lower order. 259 runs, high score of 120, average of 51.28. He's faced some 420 balls in the tournament with a strike rate of 85.47. One century and two half centuries. And as Mali just described, he's hit some 40 boundaries and 10 sixes. And we saw against Guyana here. Yes, he's been roughed up by uh, Isaiah Thorne. Yeah, he's just done for a bit of pace in that match. Kind of hit Niles Smith over deep backward square for six. Hit Thorn to the covers for four. And as you said, he's had a pretty decent season, has Sonel Ambris. One of the more experienced players in this Windward Islands batting lineup, former international cricketer as well. He'll still have ambitions of representing the West Indies again. So opportunity here for him. One missed opportunity today in terms of the catching of the West Indies Academy. Pascal was put down by Athenes when he was on 12. But Bishop made sure not this time. Yeah, Bishop has been safe as houses in that first slip position. It was Athenes. Uh, or geese actually that put down that catch up Pascal seventy five for four Ambris not I think that's a good start for Sonel Ambris just having a look here the issue is going to be Mali what is his temperament going to be in this innings that is going to be the the the, the, the test here. We had, we're 15 minutes away from lunch. Just 15. The academy will be hoping for five, even six, <laughs> going into lunch. It's an opportunity here for them. Oh, he's left that one again, but probably just doing a bit height. too much. And height too. Bit of bounce on that one. And he was leg side of the ball as well to Mali. So... This is what we're saying, Sonny Lambis. Every time the ball just tends to move about, he he's, tends to lose balance. Falls over quite a bit. He's not sure on that occasion which one to play, which one to leave. But he's a very, very dangerous player indeed. If he can just see himself through this period here. This ball swung since ball one here this morning. Once again, a bit of swing bit too much though from Aline down the leg side. i have been very much impressed with Aline's spell so far Mali. 2 for 14 for 4.5 overs and he's really getting this ball to talk from the media centre in here. Well, he, was, well he, was, he was the last bowler brought into the attack in the previous match for the West Indies Academy when they needed wickets. A match in which they did go on to win by 61 runs. Managed to pick up three for 44 in his seven overs. And I think since then, he's just shown the captain something. Goes short this time. That's easy for Ambris. Tend to want him to come forward more often than not. He's away. He picks up his first run. But a successful over for young Kadim Alin. Winwards Volcanoes in trouble, 76 for four. Talking about the Son Alambris, played some six test matches for the West Indies, 16 ODIs. Um, first class career, this will be his 73rd first class game, 3,840 runs. Um, 
when you look at it. So as Mali rightly said, he'll still be having aspirations of looking to play for the West Indies at some point in time. Because he could never say never. Stranger things have happened in the past. Looking at his first class record, he's got 819 half centuries. Scored his eight first class hundred this season, 120. And of the players probably playing in this round of competition, maybe alongside the Tate Shandapar. Is it eight first class hundreds? Yes. He'll probably be up there in terms of the amount of first class hundreds. He'll be right at the top. Oi, 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 Nadi. At the test level. Um, didn't get a, his high score was 43, so he didn't get an opportunity, but scored 148 in ODI cricket. He had an ODI century and two half centuries as well. From Ralph Gonzalez country, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, who are getting ready for the ICC Men's T20 World Cup. They'll be hosting some games, some matches. Please just get him back a little mm. overcast. As we were saying, it's a very strange day here weather-wise. It's overcast, sunny, all in one. Yeah. Here it's just gotten a bit darker here, especially in these conditions. Surely the fast bowlers must be chomping at the bit, saying, Skipper, give me the ball just before lunch. I'll maybe give you a burst. Maybe it's here and I'm young, maybe coming back. I think probably that's why we're seeing uh, Ashmeet Nedi. He's just maybe on, buying Nelly. a bit of time for the seamers. I'm not sure they would have needed that, though. Because it's been cool oh, in conditions. Nelly. On the money is Ned. Talking about World Cup. One of the legacies I'd like to see is the Annasville Cricket Facility maybe be named after Winston Davis. Fast bowler who's in England. That would really be fitting. And maybe even the Providence Stadium named after Sir Clive. 77 for four. Stanford Cricket Ground now the home of Cricket West Indies. Bang! That kept low, Mali. That one just kept down slightly from Ned. Once again in between wicket and wicket. That's his style of bowling. That's why, along with Joshua Bishop, they have been so successful for the West Indies Academy. 56 wickets between them for the season so far. Oy, nice Nelly. flight, is a good variation there. It's really commanding leaps and bounds, Ned. He has to be one of the most improved cricketers. Definitely. And maybe Malik could find himself maybe on that that tour as well too you just never know well for sure Bishop maybe will be in that conversation as well because he eats the ball he eats the ball very well does his batting has really improved leaps and bounds it's becoming more and more of a genuine all-rounder 77 for 4 the competition for places just keeps getting they keep pushing each other. Op opportunity here, though, for the academy, especially in these overhead conditions. Sonny Lambris on strike. Can Kadeem Allen find one? Oh. Just wanted to get back onto that, yeah, which he, he did. Could, and he could tell. <laughs> Sonny Lambris just never really looks comfortable coming onto that front foot, does he? He doesn't. <laughs> doesn't. He's always sitting back looking for that short ball. Yeah, he can be able to score on you. Realize that they've, they've got their plan, Mali, because they've got a deep backward square leg feeler for Ambrose. So probably just caught on the crease there, actually. Looking for that short delivery was Ambrose. Two men, fine leg and deep backward square. There for the top edge. Hodge. One of the players coming back from Australia to get a big hundred. Yeah, one of the batters who would have emerged from that test series with 
and enhance reputation. Justin Graves, who's got 246 runs, he's, he's really pushing hard in just reminding the selectors that he's still in the conversation. He too would have, like Hodge, would have made his test debut against Australia. Tongue the onside, tuck it, skips across. And you mentioned Clive Lloyd and the, the stadium at Providence probably being named after him. We know Clive Lloyd, fantastic player, what a great leader he was as well. But we know Guyana has produced some fantastic test batsmen in their past. The late Roy Frederick. Yeah, and I think, is there a debate to be had in terms of just who would you say actually was the probably the best batter that Guyana would have produced in it's the, the test game? It's an interesting conversation, mm. Ali. Alvin Kalicharan, Ron Kanai. Kanai. Yeah. Uh, so many. Um, even coming up into the, the Hoopers and the Sawans and company. Basil Butcher Basil Senior. Basil Butcher Senior. It's, an tr it's a real interesting conversation. Maybe the Guyanese cricket fans or just West Indian cricket fans can help us. You could tell us. Who, who you think? In the West Indies YouTube channel. Some phenomenal players. And you can just go back in into the late Roy Fredericks, his style of how he, he played. They were always just pretty players. It's not a conversation that you hear too often. That one just honing in once again. No ball signal by the umpire. On the stumps from Alin with that inward movement. As you said, no ball signals. And Mali, it's, it, can we take the discussion into eras? Because, you know, when it comes to sports, they, they, you, you will always have that sentimental role Obviously, as to yeah. who you would have seen and who you didn't see. If you, depending on who you talk to, you, somebody might tell you it might have been a Kanai, uh, maybe a Basil Butcher. Yeah, you, know, you, you would tend to hear different conversations. Well, I mean, the Aussies say it's the done, regardless uh, of who's who, come who after. Who's, who's come after. <laughs> 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 right? Uh, so Dan Bradman, uh, well, his legacy, Mali, it's just, just amazing. It's just that average. That really the average, I think, is what just takes everybody out. Uh, th that's what happens. Even if you're trying to have a conversation, you know, you are, when, when you look at the stats and you see Sudan Bradman's average, then you, you have to kind of... Regardless of who he was playing, playing against. against. Yeah. <laughs> just amazing. You know, the world has produced so many outstanding cricketers. It has. I think the evolution of the game is something that needs to be charted and tracked. Mm. I think it'll make for interesting, interesting viewing, reading. All different eras at the point in time. You know, you, you, you go to an India, overcompleted, 82 for 4. And the name, even though he's not Sir, Sonil Gavaskar, um, is at the top of the list. But then you would still have a, a number of other players who people will be telling you about. Vishwanath. You know, you go to a Pakistan, you got a, a Javid Miandad, Zaire Abbas, Hanif Mohammed. It's just so, you know, ev everywhere you go, there's an evolution. Maybe doesn't have the weight of runs, but if in terms of importance to the team and, and, and playing important knocks just when the team needs it. A VVS Laxman. Yes. You know, just an absolute class player. Come on in that star. Academy looking for... Just one wicket, Mali. Just before lunch. They got four minutes to go before lunch. Overcast conditions here. That have gone for a yawn lane just before Oi. lunch. I think Kevin Hodge is going to have to be very careful, Mali. He's going to have to be tight because every now and again, Ned gets the ball to keep low, keep down. Yeah, but his feet move so well. He's got a good eye, Kevin Hodge. And he looks to play as straight as possible. Just there. From the gap. Presents a full face. So even if it goes behind square, it's controlled. He's always looking to play up the V, for sure, Kevin Hodge. Unlike uh, Alex Athenes, who's looking to go square with the wicket. Come nine, young. Get someone in front of a son of Ambrose's Eddie, bat. Come on, Eddie. Just before lunch, give him that support. Get, one before lunch, Eddie boy. Get a bat pad. Just as Carlin Bowen took it. 
and echoing the same sentiments as you, Vern. One before Oi. lunch here. Yeah, he's, he's not confident to come forward, man. He, you know, so you put that pressure on him. Yeah, he's not the most aesthetically pleasing player on the front foot, but he's very effective. That's for sure. Bishop goes down at first lap. He'd be looking to snap up. He'd want to snap up. Ken, just as Mali said, he's just tentatively there. What he's really cognizant of here is getting that front pad in the way. So as you see, he's really making a conscious effort. Getting that bat way out in front of the pad. Tapping hard, searching for some confidence as Ambrose. Get some room, but he can't find the gap. Pressure mountain here. Ogis knocking it down at cover. We certainly maybe might get in another over before lunch, but we are not the umpires and we don't have a clock here with the coolest cricket ground as yet. Over completed, so we'll have one more over before lunch. So, and that's the the difference, Mali, of having a spinner. 25 overs ball, academy, large and in control here. Windward Island Volcanoes, 83 for four. Yeah, very balanced attack this from the West Indies Academy. In terms of the bowlers available to them. Who would you bowl here, Mali? One over before lunch. How many has Aline bowled so far? Let me have a look and see. Well, I, if I to was be fair, I, I'll just continue with Kadeem Aline from this end. Well, they've changed, Mali. They've the the gone for spin. Maybe even the captain himself, he could have maybe come back for for this over to Arch. Yeah, I think it's a lot to ask to just come back for one, though. I think with Aline already in, in the momentum, momentum yes. uh, into his spell and looking threatening as well. Well, <laughs> well done, skipper Mali Richards. <laughs> So, they've gone for spin. But if you're going for spin, then you have to attack. Get a silly point in before lunch. That's easy for Kevin Hodge. I think what's interesting to see, though, is that Lane's bowled only five. Young's bowled six. James has bowled five as well. And Aline has only bowled six. See, man, that's, that's close. He's out like yep. before. Yep. Misjudgment by Kevin Hodge. He missed it. It hit the pad. And the West Indies Academy have struck before lunch. A very important wicket. What do we know, Vern? Captain Naim Young, he knows his players once. Just coming straight down, as we said. Ambris, more cognizant of playing with the bat. This time, Kavim Hodge. Not quite sure. That one he probably played for a bit of spin, actually going on with the arm so Joshua Bishop just brought into the attack picks up his first what's that his 30th wicket of the season so far it's been all West Indies Academy and they go into lunch halfway through the Windwards Volcanoes the Windwards Volcanoes 83 for 5 struggling at lunch at lunch the Windward Island Volcanoes who won the toss, Alex Ateneza batting first. They are 83 for 5. They lost 1 for 7, 2 for 20, 3 for 57, 4 for 75, and 5 for 83 on the stroke of lunch. The inform Kevin Hodge goes back. And the Windward Island Volcanoes, they are in trouble. 83 for 5. We'll take a luncheon break. And we say thanks to Joel Manning, Jason, and the 360 crew alongside Marley Richards. I'm Vernon A. Springer, Windward Island Volcanoes at lunch here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground, the home of Cricket West Indies, 83 for 5.
Number two, day number one of this round number six of the West Indies Championships, West Indies Academy. Uh, they're certainly in the driver's seat versus the Windward Islands Volcanoes. 83 for five is where we start this second session. Having won the toss in what were overcast conditions this morning, opting to bat the Volcanoes things. Uh, not the way that Alec Athenes would have hoped conversation at the start of this morning at the toss was the fact that yes conditions are slightly overcast but he's hoping his batters can get through the morning period given that this surface has shown to have a lot of runs in it we think back to the last two games that Ghana Harpy Eagles played here the totals that they put up but it's going to be some mighty work if the Volcanoes will get themselves up to those types of totals, 300 plus. The two batters for the Volcanoes. Trevin Benjamin comes to the crease now. And he's gonna have four deliveries to contend with from Joshua Bishop, who picked up the last wicket before lunch. Gavin Hodge, he went LBW to Bishop. Sunil Ambrose, the leading run scorer for the Volcanoes, the other batter out there. It's really been a change of fortune, so to speak, for the Volcanoes since the first break that we took in these championships. Well, he pulled that one into the body and it nearly rebounded for a possible chance for Boeing Tuckett to take. Just for a second. That would have been an unfortunate way to go, you must say, after lunch. Can't get it past Ned, who's that backward square leg. Airing on the shorter side at the moment is Bishop. Gets this one past. Ned at square leg and finds its way into the boundary. That gets him off the mark. Uh, the completion of the over, it's 87 for five. thought for some time that maybe just the first hour or so might be overcast here at Coolidge in fact things are starting to go back to where we started in terms of the wind picking up in terms of the heavy cloud cover as well it's going to be Ashmead Ned uh, to continue after lunch as well Two spinners in operation now for the West Indies Academy after the work that was done by their seamers in the morning session. Johan Lane, Naim Young, James and Aline. Put an instant to five, on, six, five, up. and six, respectively. Come on, Eddie. certainly has been the better of the two bowling departments for the West Indies Academy 
in terms of the amount of wickets that the spinners have picked up for them. That's not to say that the seamers have not bowled well and have not done their jobs and picked up wickets. Right, and that's the... Benjamin brought into the side, this volcano side, for round number six. Hasn't played thus far the first class season. In fact, it's his first outing in terms of first class cricket since 2017. Played a couple list day games in 2019. And now here in his fifth first class game with a tall order. Quite over, just two runs from it. It's 89 for five. I mentioned the fact it's been some time since Benjamin has played at the first class level. I do recall seeing him back in Barbados, in fact. I do believe he spent some time at the University of the West Indies Cape Hill campus studying there for some time. Played some cricket in Barbados as well. batter is Benjamin and we do expect to, to see him with gloves on when the volcanoes take to the field. But he has an opportunity you know, to make a mark here for himself and on this tournament. Just two rounds yes remaining. Stares that one away. Should get close to the boundary and hits it now. So he's moving along quite nicely, is Benjamin. Uh, short and wide on that particular occasion from Johan Lane. 
mention the fact that the conditions are quite helpful in terms of the seamers and certainly expected that I am young would have brought back his seamers at some stage to leave that one still some good carry here on offer on day one I mentioned the fact that the grass on the surface is a little thicker than what we saw here in round number five in fact that's about as thick as what we saw in round number four when Barbados probably played versus the Ghana Harpy Eagles the cracks though are a bit more noticeable than the previous two surfaces that we played on Fantastic shot. Back down the ground. The hallmark shot of any good batter. Uh, I will certainly give Benjamin some confidence. He's certainly racing along at the moment. That's uh, his third boundary now in 13 runs that he's gotten. Possibly heading down the leg side on that angle. Eight runs from the over. It's 97 for five. Jovin Benjamin, Jovin G and Benjamin, the Commonwealth of Dominica, 29 years old. Joel playing in his fifth first class game. Heights of 24, he's already gone 13 here with three boundaries. We're back with Ned. Cut away nicely by Ambrose. Good work though being done on oh, the boundary. Keeps it to three runs. Looks like Ogis. It's pretty interesting. Joel is at. His last first class game was in 2017 against Barbados. Hey! Quite some time since it we've has. seen Benjamin. Oh, it has. Oh, I think because the Volcanoes also would have invested in a number of other wiki keepers, including Walcott from Barbados because of the franchise system. Certainly looks positive. Working boys, the working boys, working in Eddie. Come on, yeah, I may Ned mention Star. the fact that he's actually spent some time Come in Barbados. It's a few years, in fact. Ooh, at Eddie. the University of West Indies Cavefield campus. Probably think back maybe no four, four, five so years that Benjamin in fact Eddie. has been in Barbados. Latches onto that nicely. Dealing in boundaries at the moment. Go 
goes very quickly up to 17 Benjamin with some four boundaries so he sort of eased the pressure brought up the 100 for the Winwood Island Volcanoes 104 for 5 remember at lunch the Winwood Island Volcanoes they were 83 for 5 in 25.2 overs with 11 boundaries and 1-6 uh, last week it's at 1 for 7 2 for 20 3 for 57 4 for 75 5 for 83 total of some 119 dot balls Stefan Pascal on debut, 26, 60 balls, 96 minutes, and four boundaries. And Athens is going 20 of 28 balls, 46 minutes, three fours and one six. So, partnership motoring on at lunch, 83 for five. They're now 104 for five. Searching for his his rhythm. One for twenty-two so far. He's into his seventh over. Yeah, ball quite nicely. Before that lunch period, did Johan Lane a spell of five overs and put a little wicket in it as well? Kept things tight at the start of the morning. Still feel, jo Joel, that the maybe he had a short leg or two, especially when Pascal was a knot for a long time. You know, it might have maybe shaken him up, especially with his height and the bongs that he was getting. I think the important ploy for him here would be to be patient and uh, keep attacking Sonnel Ambrose's stumps, force Sonnel Ambrose to drive the ball through cover. It's not really comfortable and coming on his front foot. Tends to lash on to anything that is short. Yeah, he'd be very comfortable in, in those areas. I think what's interesting right now is the approach of Ambris. And I recall listening to yourself and Mali question what approach might he take. Also remembering the question being posed when the Wimbled Islands played versus Guyana. And he took an extremely attackive approach. Extremely attacking approach in that particular game. And it worked for him to a point after which he then gave away his hand. Here no. Seems to be playing within himself. Eight from 22, not necessarily looking to force things at the moment. And funny enough, this is a similar position that the Volcanoes found themselves in versus the Ghana Harpy Eagles. But I think that this approach here looks to be a better one at the moment simply because he looks as if he's willing to spend time at the crease. And time is what's required for the Volcanoes. He's been one of the century makers for the season so far, along with Kevin Hodge. So, mid Nova from Yuan Lane, keeping Sonnel Ambrose's Sonnel Ambrose quiet. And the Westerners Academy, they have used some six bowlers to date. Yeah, in relation to Ambrose, certainly absolutely nothing wrong with being positive, looking to show intent but at the same time must shoulder a measure of the responsibility and understand his role in this setup being that they are looking for him to spend time out there score runs and a quick 20 does nothing for a side so in terms of the approach at the moment he looks set he looks like if he's there rather looks like if he could be there for a long time 
But the onus also is that he would be considered, Joel, the senior pro in this team. Um, he would be the batsman with the most runs in this Winnow Island Volcanoes team. So quite a lot of responsibility on his shoulders. And we're already with five batsmen already back in the hut. Springer and company to come, John. Um, he certainly will have to, his mindset will have to change. So we start with Ned. He's a single. Oh. Working, boys. Where the next star? Come on, in, Eddie. Come next star. Come next star. One thing for sure, Joel, that you observed in the technique of Sonny Lambris is that he's making sure that he gets his bat in front of his pad, unlike a Kevin Hodge who was caught on the crease. Maybe more or less playing for turn. Oi! Working boys, working boys. Work Nettie, work Nettie. Work Nettie, work Nettie. Down the onside. Ken Benjamin bringing out the broom. I think it will be buys. Carl and Tuckett didn't collect cleanly. Maybe unsighted by the, right, Eddie, right, Eddie. the size also of uh, Jervin Benjamin, who himself is a wiki keeper as well. Right, Eddie, right, Eddie, Short right, in stature right, Eddie, by right, Carl and Boyne Tuckett. 108 for five. Oh. Working, Eddie, working, Eddie. Working, Eddie. Where Nettie, where Nettie? Where Nettie, where Nettie? Come on, Nettie, come on, Nettie. Where Nettie, where Nettie? Over completed. Two singles and two buys in that over. And the score goes up to 108 for five. Interesting times ahead, Joel. Because <coughs> anything can happen during this bleak process of play. A couple of wickets and we could be more than in the game. at some stage a partnership more than likely will build and this looks to be that partnership at the moment for the volcanoes and things looking to flatten out just a bit sun coming out a bit more it's at this stage that the academy boys cannot allow themselves to get flat yeah, very important and just have to bowl in partnerships more or less and be patient. There were just maybe some slight movement of some workers here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground. It's very comfortable when the ball is short. Ambrose it stays leg side of the ball. He plays that nicely down to the backward point feeler. Joshua Bishop. You and Lee and 
just has to keep Ambis guessing as to when that short ball will come. You just saw the gesturing of Ambris saying that ball just kind of hurried on to him. Didn't necessarily bounce as much as he expected either. Haven't really seen much variable bounce thus far today. Just recall maybe one ball in the first session of the day dying before it got to Waykeeper Boy and Tuckett. But that's certainly another factor that we always have to consider when we're here at Coolidge. I think that's why it's going to be so important for this is a new day. So it's going to be important for Ambrose to, to, to understand the moment and to readjust his own technique. Barbados piling on the pressure against the Leeward Islands, 113 without loss. What a ball and caught by Lane. Ambrose goes for nine. Pressure on the Windward Island Volcanoes. Well, I did say he was setting up for a long innings, Ambrose. But just pushing at this one. And what a catch that was. Stuck into the mitt of Johan Lane. A moment of magic for them. 108 for 6 now, the Volcanoes. What a catch by the young man. Yeah, it's never easy taking a catch like that on your follow through. Just pushing at it and bracing that long left arm of Lane. Reeled it in. Oh, that's going to make him feel good tomorrow. So, the troubles continues for the Windward Island Volcanoes batting. Shamar Springer finds himself out in the middle. Right after lunch, Ambris, who's been their leading batsman before this game with 259 runs, goes back into the hut. Shamar Springer, some 221 runs, high score of 72. He's got two half centuries so far in the season from some five matches. An average of 36.83 to complement that, Shamar Springer. And he's got some 19 wickets. So he's been one of the fines for the Windward Island Volcanoes, certainly performing as a pro but he certainly have to come to the party now Shamar Springer quite capable but Jovan Benjamin has shown his qualities already clipped away beautifully down to the boundary in the final boundary for four so offline there by Lane and a leg glance by Shamar Springer to get off the mark. He now takes the score up to 112 for six. Yeah, just string onto the pads there and certainly a delivery that you would love to get uh, as your first ball for any batter. Just needed to get something onto it. Did just that, Shamar Springer. Gonna look at some interesting stats after this delivery. Steered down to the second slip area, over completed. A successful over in terms of the wicket column for Lane. Two for 26 from his eight. The Windward Island Volcanoes after lunch, they're 112 for six. They're yeah, just looking at the Windward Islands and thinking about the fact that. At the end of three rounds, the conversation with regards to whether or not this could be the year for the Volcanoes. 
played well last season. Went all the way to the last game with the chance of winning it. Ghana Harpy Eagles stole a win, so to speak, versus the Leewards to the championship. So the first three rounds, scores of 341 and 51, 325 and 18 for one, 395 and 128 for two. All victories for the Volcanoes. Then, since that break, they've not managed to get a score over 300 runs. The Volcanoes, 191 and 288. 113 and 164, now 112 for 6 versus the Academy. Just appears as if things took a drastic change, a dramatic shift after that first break, after the first three rounds of cricket that we play in these West Indies Championships. Whether or not it's the break that contributed to it or something happened to the team after the break, you just have to wonder what is it that's resulted in the type of batting form that we're seeing now. Could be complacency too. Uh, because even on the break, they came back very, 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 very flat. You really didn't see that vigor. Um, the bowlers sort of looked very, 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 very tired when we saw them. But this is something that they're going to have to deal with. They're going to have to dig deep for these two final rounds. 71 points in second position. The Leeward Islands also up against it as well. Barbados coasting away. They're on 67. The Leeward Islands, 80. Winwood Islands, 71. Ghana, the defending champions in fourth place. The Ghana Harper Eagles, they're on 66. So still all to play for between these two top four franchises. Yes, indeed. And a quarter of a million on the line as well as the prize money. 250,000. The U.S. all is up for grabs for the winner of this West Indies Championship. It's going to go all right down to the wire. Oh yeah, you just wonder, because it's neither fair or unfair, because given that all the teams take the same break as well, but you just wonder, you know, what that break does to form, does to rhythm, does to momentum, and whether or not that has been a major factor any types of performances that we're now seeing from the Volcanoes. I'm certainly not trying to make any excuses for what they're putting up at the moment. Just asking questions. So, uh, the end of 33 overs, 113 for 6. Very interesting question that you ask, Joel, because it all comes down to preparation and how we prepare our players mentally. Because there are going to be breaks in cricket. And we are, there are also going to be injuries as well. And you're also going to have a situation where some players are going to also go off on international duties. It's interesting. When the Winwood Islands of Volcanoes were coasting, they would have had their captain, Athenes, who was away. But Kevin Hodge had come back. So there are a lot of questions, and teams just have to prepare themselves mentally. And sometimes when you have a break, people, you know, take their foot off the pedal. Because, oh, we have a break, you know, we're going back in maybe eight, ten days' time. But eight, ten days' time so far in this leap year has come very quickly. Lane continues. Caught! Brilliant catch by Colin Byrne Tuckett. A delivery going across Benjamin. He opened the face of his bat as if he was giving catch in practice. And Colin Boyne Tuckett accepts it gleefully. Benjamin goes for 19. The Windward Islands 113 for 7. Well, things are certainly going the way of the academy at the moment. It was slightly back of a length. And just climbed a little bit on Benjamin. A bit of shape away as well. And an easy catch being taken by Carlin Boyne Tuckett. So from bad to worse, things go 113 for 7 now, the Volcanoes. Yeah. London Bridge is certainly falling down here. It's the vice captain, Ryan John. The last of the recognized batsmen will come out for the Windward Island Volcanoes. So Benjamin's attacking stay has come to an end. It's interesting, and it's certainly a case of you cannot reverse the decision, but once again, that conversation goes back 
to the toss and a situation of under the conditions and certainly looking at it now these conditions are perfect for cricket on a whole neither favoring bowler or batter but looking at the conditions that we had at the start of the day looking at the fact that batting hasn't necessarily gone relatively well for you over the last four innings that you've played you wonder if maybe should have taken a chance to get themselves into the game this morning give their bowlers the best of the yeah, conditions okay. this morning hopefully prize out a few of the academy boys batters and have them probably in a position hopefully similar to what we're looking at at the moment then have your batters come into the game on what would still be a very good batting surface it's a matter of lack of confidence that's why i raised that question with you this morning joel had the windward islands been confident they would have bowled first with it with conditions flicked away by john every now and again he just gets a delivery offline and john is off the mark same thing happened with Shamar springer but when he gets it right to the left hander he's been excellent and to the right hander trying to bowl the same delivery but just falling away and a leg glance by john gives him a comfortable boundary goes up to 117 for seven and i was saying that to you in the context Joel of the Windward Island Volcanoes being playing here and understand what it is like in bowling in the first two hours, especially with that new baller, even in the first hour. And this morning was perfect. I could imagine I seeing a Ryan John and a Shamar Springer bowling to this West Indies Academy bowling batting lineup here. But that's history. Could carry good delivery here. And while you were speaking to Alex Athenes, there was also something playing in his mind and because the last game they would have batted last so all these factors would have been going to but it's a new day it's a new pitch yeah certainly not hoping to bat last on this surface given what they've experienced here before and if i i figured actually it was a very confident i'll get back to it after this I have to figure that it really was a statement being made because looking at the conditions and on the back of your batters not doing well it was a statement to win that toss and say okay we're going to bat first i'm going to trust my batters to get me through what would be the, the tricky part of the first session granted we've seen that it has not happened but you just wonder you think it was a clear mindset earlier clock when he when he flipped and he realized that was that because you were at the toss he went straight away and says he was gonna bat I reckon that was certainly planned for them because I didn't think it was a case of uh, they were guessing. Granted, I did make the joke with him that he's finally won the toss, so maybe he wasn't expecting to win that toss. That's why there. I asked you that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, granted, had he lost the toss, it would have been a similar situation given that Naeem Young did mention that the academy boys wanted to bowl first. But no, I do think that that, that was the plan coming from the team in terms of if we win the toss, we'll bat first, we'll trust our boys to go there but what happened quite early is that you saw them looking to force things play a couple more shots than were necessary under the conditions the end of the over 117 for seven sure winning the toss you know with 34 overs ball you certainly wouldn't be expecting to lose seven wickets this morning because there were maybe done a bulk of the work this morning especially with the ball moving around and sometimes when you look at some of the shot selections so far for the day including even the captain Athenes one will have to question their, their judgment but cricket is a funny old game the academy could also be rolled over in the, in their innings when the Winwood Island Volcanoes go to bowl but they're still batting 117 for 7 Joshua Bishop comes into the conversation Hey. Quicker, flatter, faster delivery. One thing for sure, Shama Springer is going to have a very positive stride. It's going to get onto the front foot. 
Gonna stay very low to the ball as well, too. Hey. He's gonna have to be very careful. He's trying to give himself some room there to try and pierce the offside field and find a gap. Just found Jordan Johnson. Is that cover? He's back and pulling this into the vacant midwicket area for four. So a length ball, short. And he's got long levers, Shamar Springer. And he dispatched that quite easily for a boundary. Yeah, just dragged that one so slightly there. Did well. Joshua Bishop. Yeah, anything that short, Springer's certainly going to capitalize on. Just rocks back onto that back foot nicely. Did Springer. ICC Men's T20 World Cup. Coming to the West Indies in the United States of America, June 1st to the 29th. The trophy tour has already started in the Caribbean. Oi! Yep, next Oi. stop, I believe, is Barbados Oi. this weekend for that trophy tour. And then Antigua and Barbuda will be the next venue. Expected to be at the Antigua Recreation Ground on the 18th of April. Oi. It's going to be one of the venues, Joel, that is being manufactured for practice for the teams who will be participating in the World Cup leg in Antigua and Barbuda. 35 overs ball, 121 for 7. We also have local cricket taking place as we speak right now. The Antigua and Barbuda Cricket Association 40 over competition, which is on Saturdays and Sundays. We just had the concluded Cricket West Indies Rising Stars on the 15 championship. Congratulations are in order for the Barbados on the 15 team and to all their parents who journeyed to Antigua and Barbuda along with Trinidad and Tobago. Um, it was really a, a, a massive contribution and show of support from parents from Barbados and Trinidad. But we're back with the real action here. Lane three for 30, looking for five. John comes forward. He's the vice captain of this young Windward Island Volcanoes team. Ryan John. Nothing much to shout about so far. But we've seen on show from the Windward Islands Volcanoes batting. Maybe a very worrying cause for the selection panel. But it could be John on Springer's day. John pushing up to mid-off. Yeah, I think he got a 41 in that second innings versus Guyana. Delayed things in terms of the victory in the end for the Guyana Harpy Eagles. He's got good technique as well, too. Didn't bowl as well as I really thought he would have. Sort of looked as if he was, don't want to say tired, but maybe the workload. He understands his role in terms of what is required for him here. Yeah, he will need to get some runs. And I mentioned that 41, and that 41 was in partnership with Shamar Springer as well. And Springer got 69 not out in that second innings. So they've batted well together already. Tending to once you attack the stumps here, Joel just be below knee roll tends to keep low. So, to support what you said, Alex Atenez would have said at the toss, he also would be mindful of that, knowing that hey, if we back once and we get 350, we could put some pressure on the West Indies Academy squad, even though this is their home venue.
our plans Joel come in at the Kensington to know well for the World Cup. A lot of activities. I think the last time I saw new erection of, of light. Yeah, things certainly coming along quite nicely. In fact, a press conference was held at Kensington Oval a couple of days ago to give a few updates on the progress and the fact that they're actually ahead of schedule. Back and across is John. Oh, wow. Made Nova. And the pressure continues. Seven for 121. wickets at real regular intervals 1 for 7, 2 for 20, 3 for 57, 4 for 75, 5 for 83, 6 for 108 and 7 for 113. So they've not been able to, to string any major partnerships at all and in cricket you must have partnerships. It's about building, building, building from the base and the Windward well Islands they, they're up against it. But there's still hope. Not sure hope, but cricket hope for the Windward Island Volcanoes. Uh, so there's still hope for them, but they're facing a lad who is number three on the wicket takers list at the moment for the championship. Oi! Oh, Captain Naim Young coming across there. Still working, still working, boys. A short extra cover. That's the beauty of a delivery. That gripped into the surface. Did have a lot of bite on it. Looking forward to see Daryl Cyrus here on this track. There's no Larry Edwards in this team. And Darius Martin, the fast bowler, has been left out. Seven down. Gillan Tyson. Hey. So, played down to the vacant third man era. Geese had to scurry for it. In the meantime, the batsman. Springer goes up to nine. It now brings the vice captain Ryan John, who is on four in strike. Oi, ay, 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 ay. Come on, BC. Hey, Ken steered down to third man. It's opening the face of the bat. Ogis again is after it, but this time they'll get two runs quite easily. Return not good at all from Ogis. Bounce in front of Carl and Boyne Tuckett. Backed up behind him. Let's go. End of over number 37 and the latest score here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground, the home of Cricket West Indies. The Windward Island Volcanoes are 124 for seven. Lost their seventh wicket at 113. Cheers, Skipper Naim Young has decided it's time to wrap this innings up. And he comes back into the conversation. So, good afternoon to Mr. Blacks and his colleague on the manual scoreboard. They've been toiling for a number of days here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground without shelter. The only thing maybe sheltering them is their hats. But they've done an excellent job staying apace. Total of some 53 overs to go in the day's play. So the day's still young. Lovely on drive by Shamar Springer. Half volley. And just punched down the ground. For four. Lean into that one. Quite nicely did Springer. Over pitch slightly from Young. Just allowed that ball to come to him. Fantastic shot straight back down the ground. Nice. 
skipper will have to be on the money very quickly. Again, he was looking to go square where was Shamar Springer. But he's got to look at the bongs because the, the bongs tends to vary. 128 for seven. So a trickling of spectators. You should have been here, Joel, for the under 15. I think it's easily some of the biggest crowds it we've seen at the college cricket ground, especially when Barbados played. And Trinidad. All right, Brennan, you tell me this one. Under 15 or Jamaica Carnival? Under 15. <laughs> <laughs> I figured that would be your answer. No, <laughs> certainly no comparison between <laughs> the two. But, yeah, honestly, it was nice to see the coverage of the youngsters, you know, and the cricket that they played. I saw a couple hundreds in there as well. Yeah, from DeMarco Wiggins. Yeah. It's a big boy. It's really, really a big boy. Didn't get to see him hit anything because he got not in this game when he played here. But they've got some talent. We've seen some good uh, Demara Hall from from Jamaica, the Jamaica captain. In fact, all of the captains really contributed. Jack Gonatinez from the Leewards, Fontaine from the Windward Islands, Wiggins. Should have added the bigger captain. Slap pass backward point for four. That's a nothing delivery again by Naim Young. Looks as if he's not warmed up yet, but you can't bowl that sort of deliveries to Springer, who's in good form. And he got back on top of it and cracked it down to the boundary for four. Short and wide and asked to be hit there from Naim Young. And I think this phase of the game, what we're seeing in terms of the surface, is what Alec Anthony was hoping his batters could get to. When I say his batters, I mean his top order batters could get to this session after lunch where things are starting to look a lot easier runs starting to flow a little easier as well it's 38 overs bowl 132 for seven yeah eight runs coming off that over two two boundaries to ill afford boundaries and i hope the west indies academy is not relaxing and feeling that Hey, we're in the game. They have to clinically finish this innings here. On 32 for 7. Lane ball well. Where the captain sort of came on and eased the pressure up. He maybe might have gone for a Joshua James. Or even a Kadim Alin. Maybe spin from one end and rotate the seamers around from this end. On 32 for 7, Joshua Bishop will start. Hey. If we know and again, the ball keeps staying down. One superstar moves out. Oy. Another superstar moves in. Joshua. Good afternoon, Marley Richards. Good afternoon, Mr. Springer. Good afternoon, everyone, once again. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At one point, I thought, okay, after lunch, things had just okay. settled down for a, on, a period. It seemed like conditions had just settled right, down. Right, yeah. Thought probably batting would have been easier, a bit easier after lunch. Not that possible, Mali. Mm. Because Ambrose got shaken up. I did. And Benjamin, who came out like a live wire. I thought he played well, though. He looked to counter attack almost, played some good strokes. To the but once again. To the spinners. Yeah. Until Lane came in. <coughs> once again, something Joel was talking about. Maybe just a little loose outside that off stump. I think the height undone him there. 
And you're looking at a guy like Lane. And he has to look up and look down and figure out what's going to be happening. I think if he looks back on that, you know, Benjamin probably see I could have left that one. Wasn't really threatening the stumps. Wasn't threatening him per se. You always been told that. Maiden over here by Joshua Bishop. And the pressure continues to mount Mali on the Windward Island Volcanoes. Top score so far has been 26 by the debutant. Alex Athen is 20, Benjamin 19. Uh, just bits and pieces scores here for a first class level. I think it's the first time in a long time, even here in Antigua, the way we've seen conditions favor. Uh, the fastball is as much as it did, especially this morning, aided with the uh, overhead conditions. Not much has changed in that area. Still quite a sunny overcast day, one of those weird days where there's a heavy gray cloud cover in the background. Sun's still fighting its way through. But both Joel and yourself have been elaborating, Mali, since we've been, you know, We've come together on commentary. Is that once the ball starts to swing around, the the, the West Indian batsman seems to be not comfortable. So it seems as if no one is really willing to be able to dig in and you know be patient and look around and see what is happening. I think it swung around for sure. It also seemed a bit just adding to the problems of the windward bowlers here. Batters, sorry. Very excellent ball and caught by you and Lane to dismiss a Sonny Lambris. But I still think we've seen some good shots played. You know, we've seen batters even play through the line at times. Still think batting conditions aren't as bad as 133 for seven. I think the Windwards would probably look back on a few of those dismissals and say we could have avoided them for sure. Rotation of the strike is also key to Mali thought that the Windward Islands batsmen allowed too much of the West Indies Academy bowlers to be just bowling consistently rather than rotate, rotation of the strike, especially when they had the left and right combination. Well, not to be overly critical, but I think Alec Athenes is a good illustration of that in terms of it's either four or nothing. Uh, you don't see too many tools, too many low risk options per se I think that's the next area of his game which he has to develop I still think he's the, the best young talent in the Caribbean he certainly is the bat. Uh, but he just got to be he's just got to temper himself and work on his defense because sometimes once you have a solid defense attack will come and I think that's what's different in this pitch just offering even a bowler such as Naeem Young. Just a bit of extra pace and bounce here. I like it. I think this academy batting lineup, Mali, will be tested by a Springer and a Ryan John and company uh, because they are taller bowlers and I think they will test the, the, the top five, six of the West Indies Academy batsmen. And they've got to remove them here. I think John's what faces facing his 22nd delivery. Springer as well. 23 deliveries. We've already seen Ryan John score a half century in that first game, so he's got a bit of batting ability. Scored 41 in the last game as well, too. You're right. So this job isn't done yet for the academy. Got to stay right on top of their game here. You know, we saw patches of that during the game between Windward Island Volcanoes and Guyana. Um, you know, so at so a point in time, it looked as if, you know, somebody just allowed it. Clubber that. Missed time shot more or less, but ended up getting two. Well, Kenny Clark, I think, is on for Ned. It's probably just a little rushed on that one. Um, John? So the second hours of play come to an end, Mali. And at the end of it, the Windward Island Volcanoes, they are 135 for seven. Really struggling up against it here at 135 for seven. But with the drinks coming on, we'll have a lot to discuss after this drinks break. Join us in roughly five minutes for the resumption of the innings.
Welcome back to the afternoon's proceedings here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground. I'm alongside Molly Richards. We're not Island Volcanoes in trouble. 135 for 7, 40 overs bowled. But their vice captain, John, and the informed Shamar Springer is at the crease. And they'll be hoping for a revival of a serious partnership. Yeah, they just need a partnership. They've just lost wickets at regular intervals in this match. Just need a quiet period here, the Windwigs Volcanoes. Let's try and blunt this attack for as long as possible. They've still got two very capable batters at the crease. And Cyrus showed us in the last game that he's quite capable as well. That as well. So I think they've been very worried about their batting in the last few games. If they're sure that, oh, that's gone down an absolute sitter. You can't drop that. Can you believe that? That's what we were talking about, Mali. The, the, the casualness. That's an easy catch in out to Bishop. Well, we were talking about how safe he has been all day. And it's not only the batters that have to refocus after a break. It's also the fielders, especially the close catchers. Second catch for the day dropped. That could have made such a difference, Mali. Yeah, Springer in on that this occasion. Huge, huge miss as we have a look at this again. Fantastic work by Mr. Manning. Edge taken. Not sure. Oy. You have to catch it before you celebrate. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if he thought he was going to come a bit quicker and he closed the hands too quickly. Um, like he sh should have taken that in his sleep, Teddy Bishop. Wasn't to be. Clipped away. Lane will have some running. Comes around into the square leg area. They get two runs quite easily. They have to be clinical. That's something that Mali was asking about. They can't just rest on their laurels. Yeah, they have to stay disciplined here. West Indies Academy. Sometimes the team can just relax. 137 for 7, the feeling team thinks the job is done. Just sit back, waiting for the next wicket. Got to treat this pair almost as the opening pair. Be as disciplined as you were to them. Partnership is 24. Every now and again. Mm. Oi! Once again, just misreading the length slightly there was Springer. That kept down as well too. Good take by Carl and Boyne Tuckett. So worrying signs here for the West Indies. Not for the academy, but for the Windward Island Volcanoes. Chance missed right after the water break. And they would have hoped that this break in between rounds would have just given them a bit of time to refocus, come back, get their lineup together. As we saw, they've made a couple of changes. Some real serious changes. Showed up this batting in their eyes. When you look on paper still, Mali, they're still missing a batsman. I'm not so sure about that. I just think... You don't think so? No, I just think the batters that have been asked to bat haven't really produced in the last couple of matches. They've just not turned up yet. Yeah. I mean, with Hodge, Ambris, and Athenes making up three, four, five, that should be as good as any. At this level? That's actually what four, five, and six now. Actually, yeah. Jeremiah has come back. Come back. There's no Kimani Melias, who was originally. I don't know if he's out injured. I think the Walcott non-selection is an interesting one. Is he out injured? That's a very, very, very. Gotta be able to ask somebody something a question. Hold a minute, Mali. We'll find out in a while. This one's clipped away. Good timing from John. And even on that forward defensive on the previous delivery shows you he's quite a competent batter. 
sometimes these lower order batters come to the fore in a crisis situation. They almost feel like the pressure is off because the main batters have failed. From a windward's perspective, they'll be hoping that's the case. As many short deliveries we've seen from Naeem Young in a match so far. Tends to generally bowl full length, the odd bouncer, just to keep the batters honest. But seems to be really liking the conditions out here at the CCG today. In fact, I think he'd love to be out of the sun with his feet up. We're hoping to knock these guys over as quickly as possible. Go short again. But that didn't get up. Mm. And 38 for seven. Lovely shot. Got on top of it. High elbow. Punched it. Wouldn't get a boundary. A very good cricketing shot there from Shamar Swinger. I think probably should have got three, but really used his height well there. Used it to his advantage. Stood tall. Got up on his toes, as he said. Got right on top of that one. Played very well through that offside. Good timing. Got very close to the boundary. Didn't run as hard as I thought they possibly could have. And it's just a matter of survival for both of them. They may be deciding we're going to occupy the crease and not exert too much pressure. The swing is somebody who is going to be on the go. He's going to be looking to score as well. And John has shown the capabilities that he can bat. Over comes to an end. 42 bold. Latest score here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground. We know the Island Vulcan has won 41 for 7. In fact, Shamar Springer scored 69 not out in the previous game. Here it was a loss in the end. Got 40 in a match before that as well versus Trinidad and Tobago. So he's shown that he's in pretty decent form with the bat. Twenty-three. This partnership, I think, very dangerous for the West Indies Academy. Yeah, and they have to, they have to be clinical. They have to take all of their catches. They already dropped Springer already. I oh, hope that is is not too costly for them. <laughs> what a chance that was as well! An absolute goober, as they say. A sitter. Good pace, good height, comfortable. Should be comfortable for any competent first slip. So these things happen, I guess. Joshua Bishop. Just keep doing his thing. Keeping it simple. Hoisted. It's gone all one bounce for four into the square leg area. Lane who's had a lot of running to do has got to chase again. So just showing his power now is spring out his partnership 32 or 56 deliveries. And 45 for seven. That's good from Springer. I think, especially against Joshua Bishop, it's important he looks to get onto that front foot. He uses his back more often than that as well. He's got a good positive stride as well to the ball. He smutters that. Pass mid on and down to the boundary for four. 
Yeah, very wristy, wasn't that? A lot of bottom hand coming yeah, into play there. Strong wrist just to find that gap, a wide mid on the region from Shamar Springer. So he's looking to counter attack now. Maybe just illustrating that in these conditions, still pretty good batting conditions as well. And he it stayed low to the ball. Very good cricket wicket once again, okay. at least here on day Dad. one. Something in it for everyone. It certainly has. Bishop. Spoil this figure so far. One for 22. We're looking to complete his seventh. Over completed seven. But, uh, once again, he's among the wickets. 149 for 743 overs bowled. Yeah, as well as the Windwards. I mean, the West Indies Academy have bowled in this inning so far. I think it's fair to say the Windwards batters have just underperformed in these conditions. back to Alec Athenes as well. Jamal Springer is now top scorer, replacing Stefan Pascal on debut, who scored 26 on 60 balls, 96 minutes, with four boundaries. Faced a total of some 49 dot balls within that, that period of time. I'm saying, you think back to Alec Athenes, you want a player of his class and already his experience probably just recognize conditions, analyze situations a bit quicker. All he needed to do was just bide his time slightly, especially in that first session. Played a few lovely shots. I'm sure you would love to have been in after lunch here. This ball getting older. Well, 43 overs old now. You know what is sort of hard, Mali? And the Windward Island Volcanoes, they, they, they paid for it against Guyana. Got bowled out cheaply in less than a time, you're back out onto the field. Yeah, when you get bowled out <laughs> cheaply, especially in this longer format, you really put yourselves under pressure to catch back up in the match. Total of some 47 overs to go still in the day's play. Still a long, long way to go. John is contented to give support to Shama Springer, executing the right skills here. He's the vice captain, and he knows uh, a lot of responsibility has been placed on his shoulder. Not a very upbeat Windward Island Volcanoes dressing room. So they need something to smile at a tea goes back and cracks that into the mid-wicket area for four. Yeah. 150 up for the Windward Island Volcanoes. Yeah, what a way to bring up that 150. A shot of real authority from Ryan John was quick onto that shot delivery. Hit way well in front of square indeed. Good back speed there. By the young man, very powerful. Batter indeed. That one right in his area. And because of his height, he's about maybe 6'2", 6'3". So the, the, the length there, he picked the length up very quickly. Nine young in the spell, Mali, he's just not been on the money. Yeah, probably a bit guilty of a little indiscipline in terms of his lengths. Probably just bowled two lengths a bit too often. That's the area. That's the nine young we know. Especially here at the CCG. Conditions still quite good for seam bowling here. Yeah, it certainly is. Hasn't was not swinging in the same way that we saw in the first session. But the pitch is still offering just a bit of sea movement here. It's got a little tinge of grass on it as well too. So you always play mind games. Just need to just land it into that right area, the four six meter length area. Again, he's short again. Also, you got to remember, every time you bang that ball in and it's clobbered in the way that it is, as we see it just lands on the half volley through to wicketkeeper Carl and Bowen Tucky. That's damage that's been done to this ball. Especially on the surfaces in the caravan as well, too. 
Got to stay disciplined. Naim Young has come back in his second spell. He's certainly not been disciplined. His first spell, six overs, one maiden, 15 runs, one wicket. He's now gone for 35. So his second spell has cost him 20. That's the area in which he's just got to be more consistent. Over. Skipper Young, good over that for the Volcanoes. 44 gone. 154 for seven. Lane, second spell after the luncheon break. As he lead some 16 runs and picked up two wickets. Three for 30. They have to find some energy, the academy. They've got to be able to clinically, they've got to be saying in their mind, Mali, we have to dismiss them before tea. Got to be looking for that. Don't let the game to run away. Well, they would have been hoping to dismiss this Volcanoes team for below 150, have the opportunity in which to do so, especially with that chance going down just after the drinks break here really set the academy back and you just got the feeling though that with this partnership and the manner in which these two batters are going about it ryan john just playing that supporting role maybe just opening up slightly in the last over 41 is a partnership yeah springer's got 31 out of the 41. it's a dangerous dangerous partnership this for the west indies academy don't want you wouldn't want uh the wind was getting anywhere near 200 and above too easy. Too easy. You have to approach this game like a, a one day game. The feelers inside the or inside more or less close. Gotta be looking to cut the singles off. Because John is playing a very important role. His job is just to get Springer back on strike. Yeah, he's played really well there, I think. His main threat is Joshua Bishop. So he's done well to just scamper off strike there on the first delivery. Seal Springer will go about his business. It's important he uses that bat, Shamar Springer. Yeah. I think Joshua Bishop can just slow it down, Mali, a bit. Yeah, he does. He's got the ability to cause batters to misread length as well. He varies his pace quite nicely. Yeah. So far, he's been honing in at the pads. That link would be pretty comfortable for a Shamar Springer. He also wouldn't mind seeing Springer just happy to go back. Especially as deep in the crease as he is. Just there. Just there. Miss Red length. Just what we were saying. He would not be too disappointed seeing Springer going back to him. Using that depth of the crease, once again, Joshua Bishop having the ability to just cause the batter to misread length should be coming forward to that one. Shamar Springer, thin edge taken, very good catch by Carlin Bowen Tuckett. He's been spectacular behind the stumps. Eight down now, one five five on the board for the Volcanoes. Lapsing concentration from Shamar Springer, looking to go square rather than up in front of him, as you rightly said, Mali. Mr. Jelenk and Bishop. The wicket that he's been searching for is finally got Springer. Yeah, big, big wicket. We saw that chance go down just after the drinks break. This one, a sharp, sharp catch by wicket keeper Carlin Bowen Tuckett. He's been having an excellent four the series so far. Yeah, he has. He's really expedited that development this season, especially in the last three, three games. I think that confidence with the bat as well is just doing his all-round game the world of good. He feels really good with where his game's at at the moment. But I still think he's got a fair way to go just to find some consistency as well. Just two games remaining. He'll be definitely be looking forward to his knock in the first innings. Well, he got the monkey off of the bat by getting his yes. first half century. Yep. And that sort of comes in stages. And so once you can be able to maneuver that... Because he was getting 40s oh, geez, just yeah, before yeah, that, yes, wasn't he? Yes, yeah, so he just wanted to get that. He's got his first one, then he got a second one. His next mission now will be to get 100. You know, so you, you be, you, you, the processes are but very, very, very important. And as you rightly said, Mali, that's when you judge uh, the development of a young player. Yeah, he's really come on leaps and bounds this season. He's shown himself as one of the leaders here in this West Indies Academy. I think he's responded to to 
the, the pressure. threat and the pressure yeah, as well. From a, Riva from a Rivaldo, Rivaldo Clark, Clark and yeah. company. And that's what you want to see from these young players. He's got good parental support hey, from oh, his mother, Sonia. When Armbar What's there, that? Gil and Tyson, the new batter. Strange that Cyrus didn't come before Tyson. He showed that he's got some capability as well. Oh. Again, for some reason, Mali, Cyrus looking to play square. They're just a bit in between there, Tyson. <laughs> yeah. Neither on the front or <laughs> backward. Back 150. 155 for 8. So it's all happening here. Yeah, it is massive, massive wicket that from Joshua Bishop. Especially on day one. You don't probably expect the spinners to come into the game as much as they have. Or as much on a day one. You know, normally you go to a cricket game, Ali. You tend to always concentrate on the batsmen and the bowlers. But sometimes the, the keepers get overlooked. But Callum Boyne took it with keeping skills that he's demonstrated so far in this 4D series is certainly... They've shone. Definitely shone with the gloves. Josh James, to see him back. Skipper Naim Young pulling himself out the attack. James only bowled the five overs in that first spell. Five overs, no maidens, 21 runs, no wicket. Well, he was quite good as well. He had that catch dropped off Pascal yeah. as well. Kadeem Alina, six overs, two maidens, 20 runs, two wickets. So they bowl well in partnership, Who both James it? and Alina. Who was it that put it down? Uh, it Aki Mogis. A Aki Mogis. Mm. I'm very much impressed, Mali, with James and Alina. They, they, they Consistency of beginning to seam the ball in and out. And also the improvement in their fitness. It's clear to see. Uh, Josh James, Kadi Malin in particular, bowled with an extra yard of pace today. Not saying he's expressed pace, but he's definitely upped his pace from what we would have seen in the past. Want them to put some miles on their legs, Mali. Yeah, he's quick enough now to take that outside edge, carry comfortably through to the slips. Has a bit of movement as well. Good seam. Good wrist position. And what is inspiring is that while we have seen Kelvin Pittman fall off, we have seen an emergence now of a James and Aline climbing up the ladder because competition for places become tighter. Yeah, you see. We even have, is it Raymond Simmons, the, the left arm seamer? Yeah. He's not got a game as, as, as yet. Haven't seen him in a while, maybe for <laughs> over a year, over 12 months. <laughs> right. Um, you got still got McKinney Clark sitting down on the bench. Yep. So competition for places, this is what we're saying. Some players respond, some players wilt under that pressure. Let's hope young Pittman can just find his way again. Just a little too short here to begin with from James. <laughs> yeah. It's got to be on the money, yeah. early o'clock. Yeah, it just has to be a little fuller here to Ryan John at the risk of being driven. It's a risk-reward game. Ryan John has shown that if the ball is shot, he's going to smack it. Definitely, he's comfortable on that back foot. Yeah, so you've got to look to bring him onto the front foot. He also looked, he's played quite a few uh, textbook forward defences as well. Yeah. So looks a competent player. He certainly worked on his defence, Mali. That's turned played. that. Beautifully. Ristily. Nicely. Good timing. But you know it is with bowlers, right? I mean, we could we could go back to someone like even a Gavin Tong, who would have played test cricket for the West Indies from Antigua and Barbuda. Gavin Tong is a proper batsman when he gets going. When he wants to be. That's what I said. Yeah. When he gets going. Yeah, when he wants to be. <laughs> um, when he gets going. Can be very devastating as well. Yeah. The bat properly, but yeah. also hits a long, long ball. It just depends on which Gavin Tong turns up. Remember, Mali, I saw him score 100 in the Leeward Islands tournament in Montserrat. Just took the game completely away. I saw him score one at police grounds <laughs> as well. <laughs> from from Montserrat. Montserrat on top person. against Antigua. Mm, I think uh, Wilden Connor would have scored a double as well. At the police recreation grounds. Just 
attempt on the back foot there was Tyson. A little fuller this time from James. I think he'll be advised to come on his front foot, Tyson. He's a knot. Is he making his debut, Mali? I don't think I've seen him before in this competition. Well, Actually playing his second match. Second, yeah, because I know it's not a name that you would see around consistently. Fast bowler. Three slips and a gully go down. Actually picked up four wickets in the only match that he would have played this season versus the combined co colleges and campuses. Well, we didn't see him here. We saw Darius Martin instead. Yeah. Hmm. I think Martin's in the squad once again, but not playing in this match. He would have done a lot of work, actually. A lot of work. In the previous game. <laughs> Certainly done a lot of work, Martin. Hmm. Darius Martin, three games, 75 overs, eight maidens, 289 runs, nine wickets. So, in context of what's happening, 156 for eight. Okay, this is a threat here for Ryan John. I think this is a battle Ryan, uh, Joshua Bishop. He's just been relishing having a good ball too. The field has to be right here. He got two slips. Oh, once again on that back foot. Trying to stay leg side of the ball. Bishop would like to see that. That would really give him some encouragement. Almost falling over there, John. Simply trying to keep his bat in front of his pad. Long on back on the boundary, no deep one, square no leg one. as well. Just above the eye line. Yeah, he was yeah. circumspect in his defense there. Every now and again, John gives you the impression, Mali, that he wants to play a big shot, wants to play an attacking shot. Not a big shot, but an attacking shot. He's 16 from 38. So there's a ploy here, Mali, that he's going to play a bishop and keep Tyson away. I think he's a senior batter in this situation. He certainly has to be. He's looked very good so far. Technically. Mm, 39 deliveries. Looks capable. They're bringing Long on now up into the circle. So just looking to add a bit of pressure. Do we see a big shot from John? I don't think so. Goes back. Once again, can't beat the man at backward point. So he's going to be forced now to try and get the single. Or maybe he trusts that Jill and Tyson can maybe hang a, a Joshua James. We'll wait and see. <sighs> Maiden over. Risky, risky indeed. Anything looking to go square, Mali, is risky. Especially with two catchers there, just waiting for that one. But We saw survives. what happened with Ashama Springer, who was outfoxed. And you called it right, Mali. 156 for 8, 47 overs bowled. It's a sort of situation, Mali, where if you're John, what do you do? 156 for 8. He's got to be looking to bat as many of these deliveries as possible. Because he could be left stranded. Just Cyrus to come. Just six runs so far for Gillan Tyson in his career. Just the one match, as we said. One first class match, that is. Mid on, mid off. Three slips. Gully. Mid on, very wide. Very. That's the area. Want to see him in that area as well. Especially in that length to Ryan John, Josh James. What is he saying to him, Mali? You've been there. Probably just saying, watch the ball. 
That one is outside that off stump, quite a way outside that off stump. No need to play it so tentatively at that one. He's saying be, be confident, be positive at the same time, but not reckless. <laughs> Spend some time with me. I know you can defend, I know you can bat, young man. Let's show the, let's show the cricket public here in the West Indies. I'll be saying something like that, I guess. Think about it, Mali. When the ball's swinging around like this, you're asking the number 9, 10. Just to hang around. Just to hang around. You have to. That's why it's a team game. It, yeah. And that's why, as coaches, we have to work on making sure that everybody's prepared in the net. Mm. I just find too many practices, Mali. We don't worry about those folks, but we expect them to save a game. Yeah, it's very weird. It's some very weird mentalities I've come across, to be fair. I'll give you another one after this delivery. Very weird mentality. He's come a fair way across his stumps there. Has he got anything on that one? I think he did. No. I'm sure he leg by signal. Joel, pull <laughs> that up for me, Joel. I need to see that one. <laughs> I saw his leg stump, Mally. And if he didn't get a nick onto that, that is pretty close. Here we go. Let's have a look. Okay. All right. We'll no come worries. back to you. 157 for 8. No worries, mate. Steered. Good Pass hands. second slip. Down to the boundary for 4. Yeah, good hands that from Ryan John. Just use the pace of Joshua James. Something he was looking to do on the last delivery of the previous over. This time a bit more pace on these deliveries from Joshua James. Just used it to find the gap. Bit of white ball skills coming into play there. Playing it as late as possible. Right under his eyes and just using his hands as Mali said. Yeah, good enterprising batting this from Ryan John goes to 20. Score goes up to 161 for 8. And they get 200. 220. Clubbered. Can't beat John Johnson at backward point. I was saying, here's the other mentality quickly. You know, at times you come across batters who can bowl. So maybe the batter's failing a bit but he's really keen for a ball. I've seen coaches go, no, you've been picked to bat. Yeah. So, bat. Just bat. <laughs> and it's like, you can contribute in... In many areas. Many areas. We're trying to win a game here. But sometimes you are the one who comes and breaks <laughs> the partnership in a real game. <laughs> <laughs> seen that happen over and over. When players just want to make a contribution, it's held against them. That's... Yeah. And that's as bad as I've come across. But even up until today, Mali... We have a situation where the, the, the fast bowlers are always bowling. Mm. They, they, they don't get a rest. We're talking about in some franchises practice. There's practice. The fast bowlers have to bowl. Um, there's not a day when somebody says, no, um, cool out, Mali and company. I think what's been happening a lot more recently, end of that over, 1-6-1 one, one for 8. What's been happening a lot more recently is teams are getting smarter boards are getting smarter especially in franchise cricket what we're seeing teams employ f net bowlers just to bowl in the nets but you have to which keeps their main bowlers fresh fresh, fresh. in fact some franchises mali practice is optional so they, they don't force you to say well you know we're having a practice today we have this major schedule you tell mali the coach that you know you'd like to hit some balls and there's a communication and you go and you work on your specific drills. Especially with the games coming thick and fast. Just there is that pad he's given. That is what you were scared about, man. Yeah, he didn't want to expose uh, young Tyson to Josh Bishop. Caught on the crease, Mali. Ended up doing so once again, not really picking length. Just on the crease, caught dead in front. Well done, Joel Manning. Execution. Perfect there, my brother. Oh, fantastic execution from Joshua Bishop as well. 
not so good from Tyson. He has to depart. And finally, Cyrus is coming out. So three for 23 now, Joshua Bishop. Into the 30s yeah. for the Go season. Goes up now to 32. 32. And no Ned here today. I think he's out injured. I'm going to say out injured. He was on the field, but he's off. So maybe getting some treatment. And the West Indies Academy attack. They've certainly done a wonderful job. Ned 3 not 8 not. And 61 for 9. They've just bowled in these. They've just used conditions presented to them here. Beautifully. They've executed well. They've had a few mishaps, a few slips. Two catches dropped for Two the day. Two catches in particular. Would Bishop and Ogis. But if you think to some of the catches they've also taken, that one off Aline, that Aline would have taken, and also uh, Johan Lane that caught and bowled, sticking that left hand out. Long wingspan. Used, had to use every inch of that. But it's been a perfect execution of their skills mm. so far, Mali, because at lunch, the Winwood Island Volcanoes were 83 for 5. They're now 162 for 9. As we were saying, it could have been even worse had they taken those catches. Still can't relax. I anticipate Ryan John's going to go into attack mode here. Doesn't have a choice. Field spread, but in terms of two fielders on the leg side boundary, long on and deep backward square. That's one He's that in one hit him in between wicket and wicket once again. Fell over, lost his balance completely. Did Ryan John so four wickets for Joshua Bishop? Spin unexpectedly proving to be very, very effective here on day one. Beautiful piece of work by Joel Manning. Ah, oh, undone in Mali. His head was all the way over the off stump and the ball was between middle and leg. Very easy decision for the umpire. And the Windward Island Volcanoes are bowled out for 162 in 48.3 overs. Joshua Bishop, the man of the hour, the man of the moment, leading off his team. And this is going to be an exciting game, Mali. Well, West Indies Academy, let's see, so far, day one has gone to them. Windward's Volcanoes in the last three matches, well, actually two matches coming into this one. The batting has really let them down. And once again here on day one, round six of this West Indies four-day championship, after a couple changes, the Windward's Volcanoes once again have underperformed with the bats. So chasing a title here, what would be their first four-day championship, they haven't got off to the best start here on day one. 162 all out. But kudos to the West Indies Academy. They bowled absolutely superbly. They certainly have, Mali. And one have to give real major credit um, for their contribution in terms of what they've done. And that has not gone unnoticed so far. So we'll just give you an analysis of the bowling figures of, as to how well the academy has bowled. Yon Lane, 10 overs, 4 maidens, 30 runs, 3 wickets. Captain Nine Young, 10 overs, 1 maiden, 35 runs, 1 wicket. Joshua James, 7 overs, no maiden, 26 runs, no wickets. Kadim Aline, 6 overs, 2 maidens, 20 runs, 2 wickets. Ashmin Ned, six overs, no maidens, 19 runs, no wicket. But the man of the day, Joshua Bishop, 9.3 overs, two maidens, 24 runs, four wickets. Let me repeat those figures again. Left arm spinner, Joshua Bishop, 9.3 overs, two maidens, 24 runs, two wickets. So now let's look at the scorecard of the Windward Islands. And just to give you an idea in terms of what would have happened so far. Solazana for 7, Pascal on debut for 26, Jeremiah for 5, Athenis for 20, Hodge 14, Ambrose 9, Benjamin 19, Springer top scoring with 31, John 20, Tyson not, Cyrus not out 1, 162 all out of 48.3 overs at lunch, they were 83 for 5, 
and bowled out for 162 in 48.3 overs. Join us in under five minutes or more, and we come back. We say thanks to Joel Manning for holding down the fourth here. And Jason, the lone man on the camera, along with Molly Richards.
Welcome back to the Coolidge Cricket Ground, the home of Cricket West Indies. It's round six. And we had an early tee after the Windward Island Volcanoes were bowled off for 162 in 48.3 overs. Successful bowling figures. Joshua Bishop, 9.3 overs, two maidens, 24 runs, four wickets. Yon Lane, 10 overs, four maidens, 30 runs, three wickets. Kadim Aline, six overs, two maidens, 20 runs, two wickets. And Naim Young, the West Indies Academy captain, 10 overs, one maiden, 35 runs, one wicket. At lunch, the Winnipeg Island Volcanoes were 83 for five in 25.2 overs. And finally bowled out just before T for 162 in 48.3 overs. Coming out for the Windward Islands has been their captain Alex Athenes along with his team and we'll be looking to see who will be starting today. It looks like it will be the vice captain Ryan John will be starting from the media center end and El Geese will be facing the first delivery. So a below par performance for the Windward Island Volcanoes mapped out by Joel Manning who was able to break down the short scoring and lack of effort in terms of the batsmen from the Windward Island Volcanoes. Joel will be starting back alongside with me. 162, Joel. We always saw the writing on the card. 85, 83 for 5 at lunch. Yeah, it certainly looked. Quite a sorrowful picture at lunch for the Volcanoes. However, they had that opportunity to come back out after, come back out after lunch and put some more runs on the board fail to do that and because of it no in the field after having won the toss this morning opting to bat first it's certainly not ideal in terms of a day one for them however they have a chance here Ryan John with ball in hand a chance to just balance the skills so to speak pick a couple wickets here in this West Indies Academy side so two slips a gully backward point Mid on, mid off, square leg, John around the wicket to Ogis. Ogis pushing it up to cover. And straight away, starting on the money. Wonder which Kadim Ali will turn up today. Joel. You've seen him, you know him. There's only one way he plays, right? Yeah, certainly it's very a, a very positive batter is Kadeem Ali. Yeah, we've been treated to a few innings from him so far across this tournament. Has 208 runs you know, for the season, Kadeem Ali. Quite a lot of cricket still to play. Some 41 overs remaining in the day's play. Meaning that the Windward Island Volcanoes will be up against it. Ogis, 94 runs from three matches in the championship so far. High score 34. Uh, but he's been. A guy who's got busy, hit some 15 boundaries so far in the innings. A little strange that Brian John has started around the wicket. We saw this against the guy on the team as well too. Just an observation, Joel. Just from my own standpoint, I don't think Benjamin is pretty far back based on Ryan John's space. He 
Maybe I don't expect you to make that comment yet, but let's look at the over. We've still got two more balls left in it. To where he took that last ball, that's why I asked you that. I wish we could get a comparison between how Ogis played that delivery and how Solisano got out at the start of the day. And how Ogis played it is how I was mentioning in terms of how, especially left handers, batting with the bowler, coming around the wicket, the ball coming back in, how tight you need to be at the start of the innings when that ball is moving around, not necessarily looking to go for those big booming drives, not looking to leave that space between back and bat and pad. But defending your castle. Which means defending your stumps. Made over to start with by Ryan John. After the Winwood Island Volcanoes who won the toss sometime this morning at 9.45, 9.40, 162 all out in 48.3 overs. Shamar Springer top scoring with 31. So good afternoon once again to Right Excellency, the Honorable Basil Morgan, one of the region's top umpires. Good afternoon to you and your family. To all the Basils, Davon Williams and company, Lionel Baker, the only test player from Montserrat, Stevel Rodney. If I'm not mistaken, um, Zawandi White might be home, so too is Joshua Grant. All these are Jemuel KB, maybe getting ready to head off to England. So, I'll get my first taste here. Joel to see Jill and Tyson. Starts with a no ball. Has 350 so far this season Kadeem Alleen and contrasting 50s at that one came in 60 odd balls one in 40 something balls but then he also got 57 and 20 deliveries versus the leewards and uh, 57 and 20 is what well, many back home everybody just know him <laughs> for that hard hitting ability Kadeem Alleen that was a run chase game pushed up to mid on to get his first run, Shamar Springer diving away like a Barbados goalkeeper. But he's not playing for Barbados in this game. He's playing for the Windward Island Volcanoes and stopped a penalty in the process. So Kadim Allen is off the mark. He's won. And no ball to start with. The score is now two without loss. It now brings the left-hander, Akimo Geese, into strike. Yeah, just to confirm what you're saying. Yeah, that 57 and 20 was in... A run chase game versus Lee Ridge and it is what got the Academy their first win of the first class championships this year. Certainly changed the whole context of the, that game. Alex, Captain Alex Athen is starting with two slips. He's in the second of two. Sonny Lambris at first. Ryan John And Kevin Hodge, all of the senior pros, along with Wiki Keeper, Jervin G and Benjamin. We're in the number 16, Tyson. That sort of kept down, but it was outside the line of the off stump. Ogie's still looking to play a forcing drive. He's on the back foot. Playing in just his second first class match is Tyson. Picked up three for 32 and one for 17 when we were in Islands played versus the Combine campuses and colleges back in February. Seems like a long time ago. Indeed. Because the last time we saw, we didn't see him here. We saw Darius Martin. Looks to have good rhythm coming up. 
bowling from the CIU Road end here in Antigua and Barbuda. Yeah, hails from the island of Dominica. Tyson, and I think that when I look around, it means there are maybe four or five Dominicans currently playing in this side. Commonwealth of Dominica. We produce the Norbert Phillips, the Kentish, the Schillingfords, the Sebastian. Stroked away beautifully. John putting his body on the line there at backward point. It's a very hot area for a fast bowler to be feeling. Grayson, Irvin, Shane, so many Schillingfords. Got a St. Lucia Jazz Festival coming up. Just last weekend you had Grenada celebrating their 50th anniversary with a reggae concert. Again on top of it, steering it. So, two without loss. And a quiet start here for the Leeward, for the Windward Islands Volcanoes. They want wickets. When you're behind the eight ball already, Joel, it's almost like a pressure situation. Uh, it certainly is, and it's showing in terms of how the Volcanoes are looking in the field at the moment. Looking as if they're still remembering what happened with the bat for them not necessarily seeing a measure of intensity at the start of things of course still early in terms of their bowling innings still into the just into the third well, but when you look out there onto the field you're not necessarily seeing signs of guys who are hungry for those wickets at the moment let's see what the ploy is going to be to the big man Aline John to Aline turns it Nice left to mid on, gets a single. Good rotation of the strikers compared to what we saw, Joel, when the Winner Island Volcanoes team batted. Yeah, stark contrast in approach for sure. Especially look at the types of shots that are being played at the moment by them. You saw Pascal playing several loose loose strikes outside the off stump, looking to get back. On to Boyce or Salazano pushing at one and being bowled between the gates. Here in contrast, now you're seeing guys allowing the ball to come to them, working it around, just getting those singles. Leaving deliveries outside of the off stump. As well, that aren't troubling them or troubling the stumps. And it presents a fantastic opportunity here for the Academy boys to really take a hold of this game, given that this is day number one. A scenario whereby they can pile on the runs, take their time and bat. Collect some batting points as well without too much pressure. Good leave again by Elgis. And he's so wide that there's no need for him to play. Island Volcanoes playing mind games, hoping that he would misjudge one from around the wicket from Ryan John. But his execution and judgment has been on par so far. Ogis again, it's wide and it's going wider and wider. Just can't understand why John is coming around the wicket, just needs to come over the wicket and get the ball to angle across. I'd love to interview some of these guys who want to be bowling around the wicket and really try and get a method to their madness as to what they're trying to work on. Especially when bowling to the left-handers. Nicked away, pass Atenez, down to the boundary for four, all along the ground. Ogis is off the mark. 
And the score in the meantime shots up to seven without loss. Yeah, he talked about not pushing at deliveries, but here just pushing at one. Ozo Geese. Fortunate for him though. It went to the carpet quite quickly. And he gets off the mark with that boundary. Our new producer in the form of Mali Richards is currently happy with what he was able to portray there on the screen. Quite seamless there from him. He's a master at that, so I'm not worried about that. <laughs> so to you, Joel, execution of skills on point. Ogi's model of concentration and defense over number three comes to an end. And the West Indies Academy is seven without loss. delivery which speedily went down to Johan Jeremiah and the wide backward point boundary McCaskey scoring a hundred his first class hundred first first class hundred at T Barbados 177 for one Craig Batwood is not out on 73 the Leewards have been up against it. The wicket taker have been Justin Graves. Match being played at Queen's Park Oval. It's a very high scoring game taking place there. West Indies Regional for the Championship continues here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground. Aline three, Ogis four, eight without loss, one no ball bowl by Tyson. target or played again by the young man Trinidad and Tobago 195 for three against the combined campuses and colleges Otley 47 Jason Mohammed not out 96 Django 94 Pushing at one again is Ogis. Every now and again he sort of gets into a frame of mind of wanting to feel bat onto the ball. It's a Bina Park. Ghana Happy Eagles are 131 for six. Shanda Paul one, Perez four, Imla one, Anderson one, Sinclair twenty-three. Save Winato 47, Ali Mohammed North, Pamal 15, Moti not out 13. Wicket takers there has been Shields with 3 for 27, Salmon 2 for 32, and Devil Green 1 for 21. So the defending champions Ghana struggling at Sabina Park in Jamaica 113 for 6, 42.3 overs bold. And here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground, the West Indies Academy. In reply to the Windward Island Volcanoes, who bowled off 162 in 48.3 overs, they're nine without loss. Yeah. 
top of it and just steering it. Getting a single. This has been a good positive start here so far from Ali Nogis. Ten without loss, four was bold. Certainly been a good start for them. And if they take anything for that game that Ghana Harpy Eagles played versus the Volcanoes, they will know that the longer they are out there, the easier it gets, the flatter things go from a Volcanoes perspective. Because Ghana were able to build partnership after partnership and get themselves with a total 300 plus. And there's a great opportunity here for the West Indies Academy to do the very same thing as well. Wouldn't want to let the Volcanoes back into day number one. Delivery from Ryan John. Just testing Aline. If you look back at the replay there. It's a bit of a way movement. Aline just opting to load that one to go by anything within his range he certainly is going to look to put back to ball he bowled well six overs two maidens 20 runs two wicket you want to back that up with some runs Ooh, that turned him right around that's a beauty that's a jaffa it was just too good for him would have maybe taken out the, the fourth stump line. Needs to find the off stump here. And once again, just a bit of a weird movement. That length though, fantastic from Ryan John, including the line as well. And what I liked about it though, from Kadeem Ali, is that he didn't go you pushing his hands away from the body. Still kept his hands tight. And a movement away from the bat meant that it didn't take the edge. And you do expect to get a few of those deliveries, especially with the new ball. This guy keeps improving. He's learning about his game. And then you get one that is cover for four. That's a half volley. And the sort of form he's in, he's going to put that away. He doesn't even move. He just poses for the camera. Look at that. Leading with his head on his shoulders. Just leaned into it. High elbow. A lovely cover drive for four. Excellent work, my brother. Yeah, textbook from Aline. And they say that's the reward that you get for spending time at the crease. And a bowler is just guilty of overpitching, especially after the type of length that he bowled with the previous delivery. Reminds me so much of my colleague, Phil Wallace. Back and hammering that. Four. Will it have the legs to go for four more? No. Big effort there. And not good running at all by Ogis and Aline. Ogis was more or less ball watching, Joel. Yeah, it should have been two on that particular occasion. But another good sound from the bat of Alina. On the back foot, still allowed that one to come to him as well. Didn't necessarily look to force the shot. So far, so good from this West Indies Academy side. Naim Young did mention at the toss that he's been relatively pleased with what they've been able to do across this tournament so far. 15 without loss. Finally, Ryan John has decided to come from a wrong to over to the left hander. So, at least he's listening. Have to be patient. Got to be patient. It's a patient game. So, good afternoon to the folks in Bermuda, in Canada. United States of America. I want to say good afternoon to Ravi Edwara and his family, his wife in E Zone, the E4 brand. Pitched up. And Ogis just overbalancing there. Missed it completely. Over number five comes to an end. The latest score here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground in the West Indies for the championship round six. West Indies Academy 15 without loss after the Windward Island Volcanoes were bowled out for 162. 
massive, massive game here on. West Indies Academy coming into this game on some 49 points. Winwood Islands in second position with 71. Leeward Islands Hurricanes with 80. Tyson. First time having a look at him. Live and in living color. Hustling Aline. Hard length, but he just plays it with soft hands. And gets a single on the onside. Academy will be looking to bat once, Joel, on this track. Yeah, certainly how things are setting up at the moment. It is certainly played into their favor, into their hands, the West Indies Academy. We're into what is the final session of day number one, and they're already batting. If things hold true to form, it's going to be a batting paradise for tomorrow for them. It's a day that they can pretty much camp out, get some runs. And still, given how early in the encounter it is, you might even see them take a piece of the morning of day number three. As well, depending on how well they bat. But should they be able to do that? Effectively put themselves in a position whereby they should not have to bat again. We'll have more than a day and a half, two full days even, to come at a Windward Island side who have not been batting well in the last three rounds. Here is Ogis pulling this one through the square leg area. Don't think he'll get a boundary. Big effort, big save there by Jeremiah. And he's outrun out. Poor communication. And the first wicket goes down via the run out route. It's almost unbelievable here. And it's simply because he was ball watching at the moment. Kadeem Alin wanted it. And had he set off instead of watching, he would have been there easily. Akeem Ogis instead. He's got to make that long walk back to the pavilion. There you see it again. Akeem was coming hard, coming strong. But he's got to be running. You, he's, he's just contented to get two. You're playing a cricket game. Name of the game is to get runs, Joel. And just as soon as we were saying that, things were looking easy. They were looking set against the run of play. A simple mistake like that provides an opportunity here uh, for the windwards. Yeah, that alertness there, that cricket awareness, just failing a geese probably on that particular occasion. Good work by Benjamin. A good game awareness also. Keeping his composure. It's just small moments. It's always about a game of moments, this game called cricket. Whereby they had a horrible batting performance, the Volcanoes. They came back out and didn't seem to be penetrative with the ball. It, it, there weren't a lot of oohs and ahs. They weren't looking as if, you know, they might pick up that wicket then all of a sudden you have a lapse in judgment opens that gate what it does now it brings intensity back towards the volcanoes brings a new batter to the crease and then all of a sudden you just might find that you're able to maybe pick up maybe two maybe three before the end of the day and then find themselves just dragging the balance back to them very important point there joel have to stay in the moment gotta keep ticked on all the time just for some reason, just drop the ball there. Got to keep it. But the academy has shown some real signs. In their last game against the combined campuses and colleges, they scored 300, 316 for seven. So they've got the appetite to score big runs. The West Indies Academy coming out to bat here. Again, back of the length delivery on the money. Can't score. Academy. In their first innings, they scored 300. In their second innings, they scored 316 for seven. 
Teddy Bishop scoring 100, 114 in that game. Karim Ali scored 32. And Joshua James scored 58, batting lower down in the order. Going for an expansive cover drive right there of Tyson. Just has to just check himself there. Let's look at the replay here once again. Left foot didn't get out of the pitch of the ball. The hands more or less just went. Could have just left that. No need for him. Just needs to keep talking to himself. He's just asking the umpire. How many deliveries to go umpire? Really should be two deliveries. Umpire signaling to him two. Like two, it could be one as well. We'll see. Over comes to an end. And so at the end of over number six, the score is 18 for one. Now here's where you notice the difference. Just in terms of even just the body language of the volcanoes at the moment. There's a bit of a pep at the step now just in terms of how they're turning around. You're hearing the voices just a bit more. And that's what happens in moments where you allow a team to get a wicket that technically they have not earned and I, I put that earned in quotation marks because good running would have meant it would have been an easy three given that Kadeem Allen was coming back to the danger end on that particular occasion so it should have been an easy three for them however because of a lapse in judgment and because of good awareness by the keeper to have that glove off and throw that ball to the bowler's end it's now afforded a moment whereby that energy has returned to the Volcanoes how you practice is how you end up playing in the game. Overcast conditions here. Joshua Dawn has just come out. He's not facing. Not sorry. Ali not facing. Joshua Dawn is facing. Ryan John into his fourth over. You're just hearing, I you know, we were not hearing this from the Volcanoes just in terms of that energy two overs ago. Three slips and a gully go down. Played stylishly is Joshua Dawn. And this is certainly a moment here now, a period the Volcanoes need to capitalize on, need to get another one. period of 30 minutes without a wicket here will send them flat again need to seize this opportunity that's been afforded to them you're just seeing Ryan John just hustling in just a bit more bowling a little heavier he's out like before he was neither forward nor back missed a straight one caught on the crease Ryan John strikes for the Windward Island Volcanoes. And the West Indies Academy lose their second wicket. First, Ogis, now Dawn. He was neither forward nor back, caught on the crease. And he's trying to rehearse to figure out that that might have been going down, but he played around a straight one. And Joshua Dawn goes back into the hut without scoring. Well, I'm not a prophet. But I do understand moments of cricket, and I knew that this was a moment for the Volcanoes. I mentioned the fact that Ryan John seemed to be running in with a bit more pep in his set. Bowling heavier, you heard the chatter going around. Picked up another one simply because of an error in judgment. Now two down, and they're sensing that this moment is theirs. Funny enough, the conditions overhead playing towards them now in terms of the breeze, picking up things quite cool. You just wonder if that one small mistake might provide the Volcanoes with that opportunity to just balance things here on day number one. I know sometimes we like to be hard on umpires, but Dawn is trying to give the impression that he was not out. But clearly, when you look back onto the replay, he was even dead from the time he missed the ball. Just look at the replay again. 
That would have taken out his middle and leg stump. Perfect shot, Kadim. 18 for 2. So, Teddy Bishop, batsman who scored 100 in the last innings for the West Indies Academy, he comes out. He also would have made his debut for the West Indies in ODI. Brian John just trying to up a gear here. Batting continues to be a major problem for the West Indies in the Caribbean. Good conditions. You can't complain. On the money. Well played here by Young Bishop. Eighteen for two. Ali is Aline is still there. He's on 10 from 13. So he's been circumspect. And just one miscommunication. Error in judgment by Ogis. Uh, started a slide down, down for naught. Got to take care of the cherry. You have to take care of the cherry. Skipper, Vice Captain Ryan John. Completed seven bold West Indies Academy in reply to the win. North Island Volcanoes won 62 all out there, 18 for two. Kenwright Peters, just coach of the North Island Volcanoes. Head coach just moving around the Kian Peters, sorry, just moving around the boundary. Manager is Leon Sebastian, son of Lockhart Sebastian. I lean back and across. Every time I see this young man, I see a Phila Wallace. Hope that he gets an opportunity to get a stint in England. I think that would really tremendously help his cricket. The fair for me to say, Joel, that Benjamin has got to be the shortest keeper in the tournament. <laughs> Quite possibly indeed. He's certainly shorter than Carl and Boyne Tuckett. 18 for two. Ali in back and punching it, can't beat the cover. like Aline to spend some time at the crease. Just bat. Just think about batting all day today. And sometimes when you look at the preparation of at the net practices, you still have people batting 10 minutes, 10, 12. And we expect them to bat all day in a cricket game. That's not going to work at this level. Here's Kadim. Squeezing this one out into the offside. And you and Jeremiah comes around. Can't stop the single. So I like the support so far by Kadim Aline. Rotation of the strike is important. Bishop not. First delivery he'll be facing from Tyson. Shamar Springer warming up. The 
ICC Men's T20 World Cup, the ninth edition, 20 teams, 55 matches. Final at Kensington Oval on June 29th. Semi-final in Trinidad, semi-final in Ghana. Eight matches in Antigua and Barbuda, including four group stage matches. Somebody could be in trouble. Just was just too deep there. You and Jeremiah. So, Bishop off the mark very quickly, calling through. Caddy Malin for a single. One thing for sure is that this West Indies Academy team is not going to be intimidated. They have demonstrated that they have come in this championship to compete, and they are competing. Short delivery. He was thinking about going to hook, and then at the last minute decided he was going to fan at it. Might as well just leave that for another day, Kadim Alin. He was not in position, so he might as well just forget about that one. Bishop calls him down and says, don't get intimidated. Just stay batting. That's above your head. That can't hit your stumps. Can't worry with the chatter. You just got to keep concentrating. Look at the ball. Athen is making some changes, trying to play mind games there. He's now put a field at deep backward square leg out in Ryan John. Bringing over a field from the onside into the leg side area as well. He's got to keep batting. Young Kadim Alin. Tyson. Bounding away. That's it. Back on across and defending nicely. Over completed. At the end of eight, West Indies Academy, they are 20 for two. They trail by 142 runs. Teddy Bishop, one of the century makers for the West Indies Academy. So he's in good touch. Again, he comes quietly forward. It's now going to be bowled into a 7 2 field, Ryan John. Another one of the big jet airlines touches down in the back of us here at the VC Bird International Airport on a very busy Wednesday in Antigua and Barbuda. 20 for 2. Mid off comes straighter. Mid on has gone up very close in a catching position. John looking for some movement here the other games around in round six Trinidad and Tobago batting first they are 218 for three Jason Mohammed, 105 not out. Django and 47 not out. Give you a further roundup. Leeward Islands playing at Queen's Park Oval. Barbados, 194 for two. 
Craig Bratchett is on 84, not out. Raymond Reefer has gone for three. Young Jonathan Drakes has come in. McCaskey scoring 101, bowled by Justin Graves. 12 fours and two sixes. The West Indies says captain is on 84, not out. That's Sabina Park in Jamaica after the delivery from Ryan John. Ghana Happy Eagles, 155 for six or 49 overs. Kamal Savory is on 56 not out. And Moti is on 46 not out. So, very good revival taking place there. Shanda Paul 1, Perez 4, Imla 1, Retired Hurt. Sinclair 23, Ali Mohammed North, Pomol 15. Died on his way to Benjamin. OJ Shields, 3 for 27. Bowled with some real pace. Nine overs, three maidens, 27 runs, three wickets. And Pete Salmon, who's been very consistent. 15 overs, two maidens, 50 runs, two wickets. Defending champions, Guyana Happy Eagles, 160 for six. On day one, a game is being played at Sabina Park in Jamaica. But here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground in Antigua and Barbuda, West Indies Academy at 20 for two. Aiming for the Yorker there. Kept out well. Made over by Ryan John. Bishop is one. And Kadim Allen is 11 from 18. Conservative time, Joel. Yeah, it's a period for them to kind of regroup a bit the West Indies Academy on the back of losing those two wickets of course Teddy Bishop he's coming in with a bit of confidence into this one yes we had the break but his last innings was 114 when they played versus the combined campuses and colleges and he'll be hoping that that form can continue now here in round six and obviously on towards round seven which will be the last round of this West Indies first class championships Kareem Ali we're hoping that he can build on what he's done thus far yes he has 350s but he would want to get himself 100 and no better time than to do it on a chance whereby you've already bowled out a side, you're on a surface which has a lot of runs in it. We've seen hundreds scored here across rounds four and five. So Tyson out of the attack. In comes Shamar Springer. And Springer from the CIU road in. Easy on the eyes as Aline comes quietly forward and strokes it up to cover. John chases. Shamar Springer before this game. Bowled 136.3 overs, 22 maidens, 456 runs, 19 wickets. A best of four for 69 within the process. Shamar Springer. Joins the list of seamers who would have picked up some wickets so far. Leading the way in the seaming attack has been Jeremiah Louis before this with some 29 wickets. Spinners have been dominating. Jamal Warrican, 30 wickets. Rakim Cornwall, 27. Ned, 27. Bishop, 29. Picking up four. So Bishop maybe will be the leading wicket taker as we speak. With some 33 wickets. Ryan John, 18 wickets in the series so far. 147.1 overs, 427 runs, 24 maidens, and 18 wickets. Ryan John. Looking forward to see Dalton Cyrus. He's got 16 wickets from 114.5 overs with 413 runs. Springer to Bishop. Hands wide, just squeezed it out into the offside. He gets a single. So good afternoon to Junior Murray. Um, heard from you in a very, very long time. As well as all of my fellow commentators there in Grenada, Devon Smith.
Here is Aline. Uppercut. Oh, it's gone for six. Had it been a misjudgment, I wonder if it is by the feeler, Yon Jeremiah. It was a short ball. He got on top of it. And an uppercut, but he's so strong. And maybe, just maybe, it looked as if Jeremiah maybe might have made a meal of, out of it. But the six runs to Aline. Anyhow, he goes up to 18. The score goes up to 28 for two. Exciting times ahead. All right, he was trying to go leg side of the ball there to punch that through offside. Shema Springer attempting to let him have it. For Johan Jeremiah, it was a case of him tracking in maybe five or six steps, thinking that the ball would have died before him. There it is, it was coming all the way. That had some pace on it. And Benjamin had to get up there, but he gave away a bye in the end. No, in fact, it's a wide signal by the umpire. So, exciting times ahead here. As I say, good afternoon to some folks in Miami. It's been a wonderful time for the folks who are listening to us via the West Indies YouTube channel. Thank you very much for joining us. McCaskey before this game would have scored some 241 runs so that 100 would have taken him out to over 300 runs there in the contest. Jason Mohammed before this game, 244. So this will be his second 100 of the season along with one half century. Over comes to an end. And West Indies Academy just coasting along 30 for two. No feet movement at all there from Caddy Malin. Inside edge and down to the fine leg boundary for four. So caught in no man's land. John looking to crash into the stumps. And in the end, just knocked it over. They got a boundary. Goes up to 22. The score goes up to 34 for two. Seems to be getting a little restless at the crease at the moment. Kadeem Allen, and the only reason I say that... Because there's been a lot of chatter coming from in the, in the back. The last four deliveries or so that he's played. He's got to keep looking up the V. Can't lose his focus. He's got to keep concentrating. And I think they're trying to restrict him. Joel by bowling him more middle and leg. Thirty four for two. Hoises that. Think he's given his hand away. Got away with it. There's no need for that from Kadim Ali. And he didn't get to the pitch of the ball. 
too small as has a hoiked at it. And I think the mind games are working. They're getting into his head here. Kadim Alin. It does go back to saying that he's looking a little restless at the crease at the moment. Like I said, the four deliveries that he played before, I made mention of the comment. Now we're seeing that particular shot. He looked fantastic at the start of things. Allow that ball to come to him, work to the round, was timing it nicely. All of a sudden, we're seeing a period where he's been kept quiet for some time, a bit more chatter. Then all of a sudden, we're seeing the aggressive strokes come out from him. Yes, by nature, he is an aggressive batter, but at the same time, looking at the situation, looking at the amount of time that you have available to you to bat, certainly wouldn't want to go back to the pavilion because of a shot like that. He's taking a new guard. He's now batting off stump, more or less. Let's see what his approach will be to this John delivery. More discipline. So it looks as if he started almost all over again. It's nice that Teddy Bishop will just call him down just to keep talking to him. He has to forget about the chatter. There's no need. Just keep batting. The Winner of the Islands have been bowled out. You are batting. That's what you worrying about. Let them talk all day. You bat until the close of play. You got 31 overs to go in the day's play and you come back tomorrow. And you're in the conversation. You get yourself a big score. Lovely out swinger. Getting the hands going. Pushing at it. Missed everything. Brian John trying to work up some steam here. He'd like to pick up another two, three wickets here. And separate the. Send shockwaves into that dressing room, the academy. He's hoisting that. One bounce for four. So he was in his arc. Got long levers. He just hit through the line. Aline goes up to 28, and the score goes up to 40 for two. Just appears as if he's in that phase, but he's going to take the attack to the Wimmered Islands Volcanoes. And if I were the Volcanoes, I would enjoy seeing Kadim Aline play those types of shots because of the fact that the chance is coming. Ah, Jeremiah judged the one on the boundary a little better. It could have been a chance for them. Or in fact, could have been a wicket because it was a chance. Shamar Springer to continue. Searching for that block hole. Two slips in the gully. And waiting for Springer. Got a man back on the point boundary. Covering a mid off. Make up the offside field. <coughs> Given that, you're going to tell yourself that more than likely he's going to just operate just outside of that off stump. Occasionally get a little tighter onto that middle, middle, and off type of line. Just like that. And he has the protection for it. He's that workhorse type of bowler. Is Springer. Uppish. A chance for a moment. But it's a boundary for Bishop. It would have been a spectacular catch if he could have plugged it off. Ariel. Well, he would say he found the gap and he found the boundary. Teddy Bishop. 
Yeah, it wasn't in total control of that one. It was Bishop was reaching for a moment there. It was white of the off stump. And for a second they thought uh, they were in with a chance. And I mentioned the fact that that is definitely where he's going to operate for majority of his deliveries. The length certainly was good from him. Drew Bishop into the drive. Good positive single there. Early calling. Gets too straight on that occasion and clipped away by Aline. Could push for three here. As he just pulled back inside of the boundary. And just going searching on that occasion was Springer. Takes the partnership now up to 30 between Bishop and Aline. Coming up to the first hour after tea. The academy. A 48 for two. 12 overs bowl. So we'll take a tea break here. West Indies round six championship. They've lost wickets of one for 18, two for 18. They're 48 for two with 12 overs bowl.
48 for two. Good resting in the academy. Ryan John still in operation. And I think back to that game versus Guyana when he bowled the bulk of the overs in their innings. One can only hope that he doesn't have to bear the majority of overs this time around given the type of workload that he had in that last one. I'd love to see a better rotation of the fast bowlers by the Volcanoes in this match. Also love to see the introduction of spin a little earlier from the volcanoes. And I context that based on the last game that they played here. Lovely looking shot there uh, by Bishop. He was in form coming into this one. And he's certainly looking in form here today. It was full and wide uh, from Ryan John and really invited uh, the drive from Teddy Bishop. He had a good sound. Coming off the bat, and that certainly will increase his confidence here. Yeah, just pulls that length back. Just let like, you on know, that occasion, John. Mentioned the fact that he had he had he had a heavy workload versus Guyana. And there's Teddy Bishop once again with that one. Not too many batters will be disappointed with a result like that. Yeah, much better there from John. But yeah, just looking at how the bowlers are rotated could also work better in the favor of the Volcanoes. They found themselves in a position whereby they had several tired legs out there from their fast bowlers because of the workload that they were presented with. nicely should just be the one brings us uh, to the end of 13 overs in this innings it's 54 for two Got a hand onto it, Hodge. 
wasn't able to stop it. And it means that they get two. Not entirely pleased with the effort. Shamar Springer. He's done well for this volcano side. In fact, amongst the leading wicket takers came into this one, picking up 19 wickets. Springer. He's really had a good time since joining this franchise. Made mention of the fact in the game before this. <coughs> had he opted to stay or had he still been around? The Barbados Pride set up. Barbados obviously being his home base. I don't think he would have had the, the, the type of opportunities that he's been afforded here with the Volcanoes. And because of that, we would not have seen the type of quality that he possesses. quality like that that produces edges uh, but that will find its way into the boundary uh, the frustration continues for Springer and the runs continue for Bishop Springer very upset that Athenes or Hodge didn't hold that one found the gap you could hear it he was really set him up nicely but didn't go to hand. Yeah, just looking yeah. at him now. Crouched over. Springer. That one flew off the edge of Teddy Bishop and got through that slip cord and quite quickly was also at an awkward height as well. Would have taken almost a Herculean effort to reel that one in. But they need something spectacular. That's what Springer maybe was asking for. Gonna have to be patient, Joel. He's getting a little frustrated. They need to find something, they have to come up with something spectacular a catch or run out. Something they gotta be able to fight. Still, his academy trailed by some 102 runs. Edge he found caught. Catch taken this time. Springer gets his justice. It's wicket number three down. Very lame effort there from Teddy Bishop. Hands going. His left foot not coming out to the pitch of the ball. Just hanging his bat out there. No balance at all. And just caught on the crease. He's just lot of locked his foot. He was just on his toe, not on his heel. And Bishop goes back. Springer strikes. You see the passion there from Shamar Springer. He was fighting for that one. He was asking his side to hold the catches. This time, it was taken. By the man with the gloves. So, again as we keep talking, Joel, right after the break, another wicket goes down. Rewarded Shamar Springer for the effort that he's put in so far into his third over. And there you see it. The expressions as a result of the hard work that he's putting in, especially on a surface which we know is good for batting here at Coolidge. He's been rewarded. He picks up his first of the day. Brings Jordan Johnson now to the crease. And he too is a very attacking player as well. Sixty for three. Two slips for Johnson. 
to slips a gully backward point to cover mid on mid off feel on I don't want to say into a real short mid wicket position but more or less now moving now moving closer to the umpire at square leg Johnson squared up over comes to an end successful over for Shamar Springer his first of the match in the West Indies Academy who trailed by 102 runs they're 60 for 3 so Tyson is now switched to the media center end here No ball. First up by Tyson. So again, just like how he started in his first spell, he starts with a no ball from the media center and era. Probably think two here. And get running between Aline and Johnson means they get it quite comfortably. There's been some time since Kadeem Aline has been on straight. Chato starting again, Joel. They're over the wicket to left handed Johnson. Two slips and a gully, a man at backward point. So looking to angle that ball across Johnson. Whoa! Nearly found its way onto the stumps. And it runs away towards that fine leg boundary. Living a charmed life is Johnson, but he gets off the mark with that one. Very charmed life indeed. Things you hear, eh? On a cricket field. Real things that you hear.
Tyson sounds like a tiger. Running Tyson. So still no wicket yet in his five overs. Knock for 19, 69 for three. Cuddy Mallins on 35 from 32. Jordan Johnson five from four. Seems to be bowling with the magic arm at the moment. Shamar Springer, he's really putting a, putting a lot into his bowling effort here. And that's the link that you have to bowl to a Jordan Johnson because he stays leg side of the ball. He doesn't stays on his back foot because he's looking to, to pull and to play uppercut shots. He wants him to drive up to cover. They're just going across him with that angle. Feeling for it at the moment is Johnson. You think about how he got off the mark with that inside edge. Pass the stumps. Seeing how he's pushing at that one as well. Good signs for you if you're a bowler. Not good signs if you're Jordan Johnson. Left foot out of alignment there, Joel. Look where he's standing, just on the leg stump. A little short ball, he could have got up across and looked to be able to find the gap. Just looking to just fire more or less with his hands. Got enough glove onto that one. And it's going to make its way towards the fine leg boundary for four. Just getting the line wrong on that occasion was Springer. Also interesting is that two deliveries before that one, he adds fine leg to go a lot wider. Looks very uncomfortable when the ball comes in that area. And I think simply because he's, he's not moving his, his left foot, he doesn't get deep into his squeeze, he doesn't move his hands, he really tends to use his hands. <coughs> The end of the over, it's 73 for three. Based on what Joel would have just said, the West Indies Academy Large and in control, and the Windward Island Volcanoes bowled out for 162. So they're almost like they're playing catch up. Wrap 
tapped on the pad. And that dreaded finger goes up. So wicket number four. And the Volcanoes, they are sensing something. Playing around a straight delivery there. Karim Alin, 35 from 33, goes leg before. Seventy three for four. It's all happening. Yeah, I just think back maybe thirty minutes or so I mentioned. Started to look a little unsettled at the crease. Kadeem Aline picked up a couple of boundaries. Then there was a passage of play where he wasn't really getting the strike and for somebody like Kadeem Ali, he, he he enjoys being on strike because that's when he's most comfortable. So the fact that he got a little cold, got one or two singles after that. And then... The starter lost his rhythm. Pretty much, you can see that. But just clawing their way back into this one. The Volcanoes. The seamers asked to do a job with the ball and doing it relatively well at the moment. So Tyson finally picking up his first wicket. Ooh, where did he find that from, Joel? Well, absolute snorter to get for your first delivery. Welcome to the crease, Carl and Bowen Tuckett. That one had good lift. Good carry and good pace on that one as well. Played it well. Dropped his hands. You've been taught in an early age that anything above your stumps, you really should not be looking to play. Hustling in there. On the money. You would say at 73 for four. Coming on to the end of day. Earn number one. Things are pretty much hanging in the balance. At the moment, one or two wickets. Makes it even, Stevens. If this partnership takes them to the end of the day, you would say a slight advantage to the West Indies Academy. <coughs> Tyson looks a lot more comfortable from this end, Joel compared to when he started from the CIU road in. Yeah, it seems to be in a better stride here coming from this end. But funny enough, we've seen that play out for a lot of the fast bowlers who've been bowling here at Coolidge. Tuckett is off and running. Thinking about two changes mine because the feeler tapped the ball, Jeremiah. He's going to scurry back into his crease. Interesting to see now 
as Athene is just asking Ranjon to just drop a bit further back at mid-off. We certainly know that Johnson enjoys going at the ball quite hard. Probably expects something to be a little uppish from him. But he goes hard at that one. But keeps it along the ground. An interesting contest brewing at the moment. And it's at that pivotal stage of the game. Whereby the partnership is what the academy needs. But one or two wickets. Just one or two. And the Volcanoes will feel as if there's life in this contest for them. And the interesting thing about it is that there's still quite a bit of time left in day number one. Still another 24 overs or so to go in the game. But there were 14 wickets have fallen on a track that you would say it's good for batting. You think the game could be finished in three days? By the shouting? I'm trying to figure out which perspective to answer that question from. <laughs> from a cricket lover's perspective? Or from somebody who would like to sleep perspective? <laughs> However you look at it, just answer the question. <laughs> I really wouldn't want it to become a short game though because obviously you want it to be a contest but you at the same time you want players to play their role so you've seen a scenario where the Wimmer Islands batters haven't played their role and because of that they're in the position that they're in we're seeing a situation where a few wickets have fallen for the academy but you would want that somebody stands up and bats I think everybody would love that any day, always looking at what is best for West Indies cricket, who are the names that stand out, not when things are easy only, but when you're put under a bit of pressure. I think it boils down, Joel, to, to mindfulness, is, is, is how the players prepare themselves mentally, how they go about trying to you know, figure out how they're going to approach their innings. Everybody, you know, still wants to bring their, their white bar skills into the red bar skills. And still not understanding that the, the context of the game requires time. So you have to spend time at the crease. outside the line at the leg stump. I would have pitched outside. I think they all know that as well too. But you never know. You have to test the umpire. He has to do his job. Yeah, quite some ways outside that leg stump. Possibly not even hitting leg there as well based on where the impact was. See a helmet now coming onto the field. So Athens might be bringing himself in quite close here on the leg stump. Or rather, oh sorry, on the leg side for Johnson. Now operating from around the wicket as well to him. We're probably just looking to get that ball to angle into him. That middle and middle, middle, and middle leg stump line. Hoping for that uppish drive off the pads, maybe from Johnson, to present a chance to Athenae. just quite short. I was going to say a short me wicket, but even shorter than a short me wicket on the leg side. <laughs> I like how you said that, Joel. <laughs> Anything within that area, body line, you tends to be very comfortable. The Springer spell has been impressive so far. One for 29 from his five. 
the economy rate might not indicate that but he's certainly up to gear here Yeah, occasionally when you have a bowler who's looking for wickets and it appears as if he is that bowler that they have searching for those wickets, you do expect occasionally that they will go from some runs because they're always looking for that magic delivery and then occasionally it becomes over pitch or occasionally it's just a bit offline and we've seen that with a couple of deliveries from Springer. So certainly, yeah, if you just look at it based on a bowling card and seeing that in turn the figures, you might say, okay, he's been the most expensive of their bowlers but he is that one who's hunting for those wickets Tyson to continue bowled him he didn't know anything about that played down the wrong line Jordan Johnson and the ball ripped out his off them turned him right around and the Windward Island Volcanoes they are in this game Jim Tyson strikes again. Yeah, in this game in a big way. 15 wickets now falling on day number one of this round six encounter. Operating from around the wicket was Tyson. Length was good. A bit of movement, in fact. A bit of shape away and from the left-handed Johnson. His off stump goes. And he too heads back to the pavilion. Uh, things now hanging in the balance here between the Volcanoes and the Academy. Looking a lot more comfortable indeed uh, from this media center end is Tyson. He's now got two wickets to his name since moving to this end. Just playing inside the line of that one. As I mentioned, just holding its shape there. Maybe slightly moving away from Johnson. Naturally, you would have expected maybe it might come back in on the angle. But it's been fantastic bowling from the Volcanoes and I go back to mentioning just that one lapse in concentration which would have been that run out and what it did for the momentum of the Volcanoes in terms of the type of energy that it gave them and since then this has looked an entirely different game Joshua James is the new batter and Anthony is once again will employ himself short on that leg side There are always small moments in cricket and it's up to a side to capitalize on this on those moments and the volcanoes have done just that uppish for some time larry edward the substitute fielder on the field doing the work things starting to get gray and gloomy here at Coolidge and I'm not talking about the scorecard I'm talking about the skies A heavy cloud cover over us here you would say ideal fast bowling conditions tuck it on one James on one And Tyson into a great second spell. You would say that he's bouncing in and full of life. Excited there on that occasion <laughs> was Larry Edward. There's that smile from him. He knows. It was a 
totally necessary than that occasion. But at the same time, you enjoy seeing that out on the field. And that's as a result of the fact that they're picking up wickets. They sense that they're in the game. One delivery left now, and this Tyson over. <laughs> Athenes does the fielding, placed himself there just for that. A successful one for Tyson. It's 77 for five. wicket for Tyson his second of the day just playing inside that one and I mentioned the fact that it held its line and slightly probably just moved away uh, from Johnson just playing for that one that was coming back in on the angle rewarded for a fantastic line and length Tyson Was that a chance for Springer? His reactions tell you uh, that it was. Not the easiest to take those cotton bowl chances. Hit on the up there uh, from James. Just pushing at it. Got his hands to it. Did not stick. It would have been his second. It would have been his team six. Saw so Johan Lane take a spectacular cotton bowl chance a little earlier this morning. He got his hand to it, Springer. That's where the disappointment was uh, for him. Got that hand there. In fact, probably just the fingertips. And that's maybe why it got away from him. Catches the cry. And it was Superman for a moment, the way he leapt at that one. Couldn't get to it though. And all of a sudden, there's a lot more life in this contest. All of a sudden, we're seeing just that extra bit of effort. Not just with the ball, but also in the field. Seeing those trees blowing in the back. Things getting a lot stronger here. We do hope that the rain won't come behind it. Played back over the head. A shot of confidence from James. His first boundary of the day. Getting a little too close to James on that occasion. He's a tall man. And anything in his arc, he's going to have a swing at. It was a good confident shot from James. But given how things have looked. I would have let that get me down if I were Shamar Springer. There's a slight adjustment in length. 
uh, similar to that previous delivery where he would have had the cotton ball chance. Could produce the wicket for him again. Well, he was coming in off the boundary. Uh, but it sailed miles over. James has intent. And he gets a six. Twenty overs bold here. It's eighty nine for five. They're just having a swing at that one it was Joshua James. I certainly had to be a premeditated shot on that occasion. Staff just getting into position. Really sensing that the skies might cry anytime soon. Thickish outside edge, pushing for two. And get it quite comfortably. <coughs> yeah, you can certainly hear that wind just picking up through our stump mics. What a day of cricket we've had here. On the opening day of round number six the Volcanoes and the West Indies Academy. But they were both sites have collected bowling points. No batting points though. Oh, catch with the cry. And I do think there might have been some bat on that one. Confirmed now. Vampire Dugid. Might have needed maybe a few more inches on the arms to collect that one. Jervin Benjamin. Yeah, it was widened down the leg side and yeah, just probably need an earlier skip maybe. But it would have been a difficult chance anyways for him. Let's also not forget he's not necessarily the tallest of keepers standing behind there. Doesn't necessarily have the longest limbs. Knows he chased a wide one there. Carlin Bowen tuck it. And finally rehearsing what he probably should have done. Leave that one alone. Let it go by. 95 for 5. Two deliveries left in this one. better from him. You just wonder what might be going through their minds at the moment. We saw the two shots that James played in the previous over. You wonder if his modus operandi is to take the attack to the Volcanoes. Bowen Tucket at the moment seems quite content to settle in here and play a long one. Get on top of that one easily. Drop ball to finish it. 95 for 5.
other than that, 35 uh, from Kadeem Aline doesn't necessarily make for good reading for the West Indies Academy. Uh, they would have been on cloud nine after the first half of today, bowling out uh, the windwards for 162. Look to have a good start at the top between Aline and Auguste. Then that run out, you would say, open the floodgate, so to speak. searching for that Yorker but gets it back down in time does Joshua James and now just asking for a slight adjustment in his field springer he's got a man a deep backward square leg on the boundary and fine leg is quite wide on the boundary as well so at some stage you wonder whether or not he might go short as James to hook him Goes full and is driven. Not the best of connections, just results in one. Bungary comes off to feel that one. Brings us to the end of the over. It's 97 for five. Sorry on the intervention, Joel, but just had some sad news coming out of St. Kitts and Nevis. The passing of one of the Caribbean sports administrators, um, sportsman, played cricket and football for St. Kitts and Nevis during his time. Alfonso Bridgewater was the president of the National Olympic Committee. So from us here at 360, uh, the West Indies Cricket Board, Leeward Islands Cricket Board, all the cricket fraternity, we want to extend condolences to his family. So Bridgewater would have played some real excellent football and we go back into the days of maybe uh, Mervyn Richards, and company played cricket also along with Viv Richards and St. Kitts would have maybe played against Antigua in those days. You cricket, senior cricket. See some rain setting up in the eastern area. 
Gong's man are on guard. I think this time they are looking to indicate that he might be on his way. Kadim Philip, the conductor. But the sun's still peeping through. Meantime, the academy is going about their business very easily. 99 for 5. I think this time, Joel. So we would have called it. Rain stops play here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground with the academy on 99 for 5. 99 for 5. Rain stops play here in pursuit of the West Indies Academy who are bowled over 162 in 48.3 overs. Colin Boyne Tuckett is on 10 not out. And Joshua James is on 14. So we say thanks to the 360 crew. Mally Richards, Joel Manning, and the big man himself on the top, Jason. We will take a break as rain has halted play here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground.
Well, play has ended here on day one of round six of this all-important game with the Windward Islands who are placed on 71 points and the West Indies Academy on 49 points. In the end, play has been called off for the day due to rain. And tomorrow morning we'll be starting at 9.38 a.m. in the morning. A total of some 96 overs is expected to be bowled. Mali, how will you rate the day? Well, for much of the day, I would have said the West Indies Academy would have bossed proceedings. But here late on day one, I'd say Windward's Volcanoes roared back into this match. 99 for five, the West Indies Academy still trailing by 63 runs. And I think just weighing things up, stumps on day one, evens, to be fair. 15 wickets has fallen, Mali. Is it a wicket where we could be scared about to see 15 wickets falling? Uh, not so much. I thought it was a, a, a very good cricket wicket sub minute for everyone. Uh, I think if you really knuckle down and earn that right to, to score runs, you could have gotten some runs out there today. We saw the fast bowlers look very impressive. And also Joshua Bishop picked up four on day one. So that tells me this is a fantastic cricket wicket all around. No half centuries today, 261 runs scored. Um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a day like this, I'm um, beginning to kind of worry because, as you rightly said, it's been a good batting wicket so yeah. far. All around good cricketing wicket. I think you really had to earn the right, though, as a batsman to score big on this pitch. Uh, what we saw a lot of the batters fall short in that area. We did see a lot of the batters fall short in that area. But halfway through, still five wickets in the hutch. 100 for 5, mm, 63 behind. As I said earlier, I'd say proceedings are 50-50. Well, just to let you know, the not-out batsman, Callum Boyne Tuckett, is on 10 not-out. Joshua James is on 14 on debut. debut. Stefan Pascal scored 26, 60 balls, 96 minutes, 4-4s, four 49 dot balls. Athens got 20, and Shamar Springer, he rounded up with 31 in the end. But the man who's done the damage and continues to be the main wicket taker so far for this academy team has been Joshua Bishop. 9.3 overs, two maidens, 24 runs, four wickets. Now taking his tally to 33 wickets. And if we move around the region, Mali, realize that it was a, a torrid day for the Leeward Islands Hurricanes at Queen's Park Oval. Two centuries, a century from West Indies Test captain. Jason Mohammed is also in good form too. So too is Amir Jango. So we've had four centuries in round six. Yeah, we've surpassing the amount of hundreds scored in previous editions of this West Indies four-day championship. It just tells me that we're seeing the slight improvement from the first-class batters around the region. Yeah. Well, folks, we will sign out here from the Coolidge Cricket Ground, the home of Cricket West Indies, to let you know that the Windward Island Volcanoes who won the toss were bowled out for 162 in 48.3 overs. The West Indies Academy closed day one. After rain, 99 for 5 in 22.1 overs. They trail by some 63 runs. But the help of the mighty God will be back here tomorrow morning early. Whether it be overcast, sunny or whatever. Once cricket is around, we're going to be here. And you know once cricket comes, rain comes with it as well too. And the place has been extremely hot. I want to thank Jason. Um, also Joel Manning. Mally Richards. And everybody who supported us also on the West Indies YouTube channel, thank you very much for your comments. And we'll be back tomorrow morning right here in the Living Color, Thursday morning on 360 West Indies YouTube channel. God bless you guys.